Welcome everybody to the Rare Artist Spotlight today. This is take two, by the way. Um, the first one is my fault, totally my fault. I did not record my guest. So all that was recorded was me. And that doesn't work. But um, I, I have a very, very, very special guest today. For the second time, which is amazing. Um, and I'm going to put your last name again. Just letting you know. Gonna Actually, I'll let you introduce yourself. <laughs> um, Blind Chronicles is my guest today. And he is an amazing artist that just so happens to also have glaucoma. And I'll, I will, we'll get into that again. Um because I feel like that's important. I do want to actually uh, give you the time to talk about your situation and the what caused it. Because like earlier, it's a genetic thing, and like myself. And but uh, I, I'm I'm not gonna butcher your last name, Ryan. <laughs> Welcome Ryan. to the show. Man. Hey, thanks for having me on here. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Again, man. I'm so sorry about that. I I really yeah. feel like I wasted your time earlier. I really do. No, nah, man. Shit happens. You know, I'm cool with it. I could talk about art all day and night. Awesome. I love it. Well, not all yeah. night because you got to create art too. So. Yeah. Yeah. I got to do that too. <laughs> it's, been a big, it's been a big day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's talk about that. Um, earlier on the show, something incredible happened, and I, I yeah. thought we had it. I thought we caught it live. We did, but not really. Um, you want to tell them what happened? And actually, yeah. actually break it down for them. Like, tell them what's going on with the... I'll, I'll let you explain. All right, so there's this big um, uh, benefit coming up. And it is the Jack Martin Fund. Uh, they're raising money for Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. And where I'm a, a member of Temple, uh, Paper Buddha's Temple Artists, um, this, this show was curated. This like just amazing opportunity to put your art out there. And uh, so I did a piece that is of the restaurant where the benefit is being held and I did like ink and watercolor and photography and digital and AI and, and anyway we were doing a screen share and the telegram message popped up from my friend Allison Joy and it just said good news your Jack Martin fund piece sold for 700 US dollars and it just caught me totally like I was dumbfounded. I was like, "Are you serious?" And so you split that too, yeah. um, and that came up yeah. to around nine hundred dollars your currency, right? Yeah, dude, nine hundred and forty-five dollars Canadian. Wow. Uh, so it's gonna be it's gonna be split fifty-fifty. Uh, so I'll get some of the profits, and then the rest of the money goes to the hospital to the children's fund. <sighs> This is Groundhog Day. The phone rang last time too. <laughs> it did. It did, and um, I, I thought I left it somewhere. I didn't. Um, but do you do you want to share your screen? And because you you showed the piece earlier. Yeah, here, just one second. I'll put it on the uh, Twitter post that I posted today about it because it's just amazing. And then I will share my screen. Click on it. My computer's being slow. Oh, you're fine, man. Share screen. And I get that Bernie eye. Oh, boy, that's fun. <laughs> okay. We'll do this one. Go live. Yeah. There we go. Right. Okay. You guys can see that? Uh, I got a click and watch stream. Where is my mouse? Do you have that problem? Do you ever lose your mouse? No, how mine's connected. It lights up, so it's easy oh, no, to I see. Oh no, I mean like the pointer. 
Oh, the cursor? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate that. <laughs> like I, I was just over when I, uh, when I, when I lose it, I always put it over here in the corner because I know that if it can't go anywhere else, and that's just how I find it. Um, I'm, I, I've, I've always wondered if other people experience that. But yeah, this is the piece. Um, you want to break it down? And I know you did it earlier, and I'm sorry for making you repeat yourself. But uh, <laughs> that's like, and also, um, what's the story behind the the whole event? Um, that way, they know if they're interested. I mean, you never know; they might want to go check it out. And I yeah, no, for sure. But they can't buy that yeah. one because it's already sold. But it is, other yeah. artists there too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Paper Buddha's involved, and you know, there's a lot of uh, the dude abides. He's getting involved in it. And mm. There's a lot of people interested. It's it's a nice event. I think Allison was saying in Spaces the other day, yesterday, that there is 20 artists, so 20 pieces of art that will wow. be available. And we're going to be doing it on the Solana blockchain. So that's really cool. Um, Exchange yeah. Art is actually going to promote the, you know, promote the whole thing and market and advertise. And, uh, this whole event starts in October. So this piece is actually sold before the event started. You know, that's going to be a massive event if it's, it's artists selling before the event. <laughs> Like, it's, it's amazing. I was just, I told my mom, I told my wife, you know, I cried on the phone when I was telling my wife, like, it's just like, you know, I got my, the whole, the whole, um, geez, brain fart. The whole thing is like childhood dream, right? And mm -hmm. so like my childhood dream was to be an artist and to get my art into New York City. And now it's going to Manhattan, you know? This is and, uh And didn't you say that they were gonna use it for promotional material too? Yeah, they want to use it for promotional material and marketing and yeah. So then the, the director, the director of the Jack Martin Fund is the one that bought the piece. And no he way. wants to Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like it's it's a huge day. Just completely you know, as an artist you get you get that your art out there and people see it and people start collecting it and you're like, Oh my God, like this is just an amazing feeling. Now, I even today also, I sold an addition today too. And you know, it's all the addition to soft book. So that was another sale today. So two sales, so you, you know, so it does happen. Way. It does happen in web three. You just gotta do the work. But, but uh, yeah. So this piece, that, that's the thing though. Is, you gotta do the work and, it's got to look good. And this right here looks incredible. Um, there's one thing that I know. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Uh, there's one thing that I noticed just now that I didn't really notice earlier. Um, mm -hmm. On the left here, the side street, the building, yep. you got the perspective right of the top of mm -hmm. the building. And, the, well, I mean, just all of it. You got the perspective right. And that's, that's important because... Um, that's a real place for anybody that doesn't know. That is a real place. And yep. so getting the perspective right is, is, is key. And I feel like you nailed it. You obviously nailed it because it's sold before the event. So yeah. <laughs> you should be yeah, really so what I, Oh, man. I'm, I'm, I was so, like, on high from it that I had to have a nap this afternoon. <laughs> You know, just like rest my eye and just kind of like calm down a little bit, you know, like, oh, wow, I can't believe that happened. And, you know, um, yeah, so this is a real place. And, and what I like to do is I'll, I'll jump on Google Maps and that's where I get my references from. So I went to the actual street restaurant is Campanella in Manhattan. And I decided to draw and paint on paper this ink and watercolor, this actual place. And then I took a picture with my camera and I put it on Photoshop and I used Topaz and then I used artificial intelligence to, you know, do the final piece. And that's how I do my artwork lately. It's just an amazing tool to use. That's incredible. And the more that I look at it, the more 
things pop out. That, that's what I love mm. about art. Like the um the uh the the you you got like a highlight on the what is that like an awning? Yeah. I did not notice that yeah. earlier. Yeah, it's actually got the uh, the restaurant's name that I took a screenshot from Google Maps, put it in Photoshop, and copied it and edited it so that it's actually the same lettering as the the benefit place, like the restaurant. That's actually where they put their signs on their awning. So I was like, this is really cool. I'm going to add this in here. And yeah. I wonder if they're going to – all right. Just from if I was the business owner. Mm-hmm. That would be in my restaurant. Oh yeah, for sure. I would like. I work in an Italian restaurant. We have artwork on our walls from other artists, so it's it's a really cool thing to have in a restaurant, and especially if it's like your restaurant, mm-hmm. right? It's it's a piece of art from your restaurant, and and like that's the other thing that I'm going to get into, right? Like Allison's like, you know, this this is a really awesome thing, and you could really turn this into quite a little lucrative business right like you could be creating doing commission work for people you know say you have uh, a childhood home that you remembered that you have good memories or you have a vacation that you took and you want to have a piece of art to remember that place I would get this Google Maps location from you or whoever and I'd jump on Google Maps and I'd draw it and paint it and do this to it change it into something unique and a one-on-one and then you know gift the original piece to the person along with the nft it's a good way to you know get what nfts are out there into the world too right like onboard more people more potential collectors and onboard more artists you know nfts have such a a bad review out there in the world so this is a way to kind of say hey you know what like they're not all that bad and there are people that are here working and building and creating legacies and putting that art out into the universe. So, you know, like if I can do it, anybody can do it. That's what I tell people. That's exactly what I tell people. I'm like, dude, I'm legal. I'm legally blind. If I can do what I do, what's stopping you from doing anything? Like if Mm -hmm. if you, if you want to do something and you, I mean, it's, it's going to take time, you know? And I, I don't, I don't care if it's something that you're not even like into, like at the time. If you want to do anything, you might have to practice, but that's with anything. Um, nobody starts sports. I'm not even a sports person. I don't know why I brought that as a example. <laughs> I'm not a sports person either. <laughs> but I imagine <laughs> you, you don't start out as a pro. No, no, you should see some of my original stuff. Like, so, like, I guess I could go to like the backstory too. That might help. Yeah. Bring some clarity, right? Like, um, so I've always been an artist ever since I was old enough to pick up a pencil or a pen um, from a little boy. I grew up surrounded by artists, uh, great uncles and, uh, you know, my grandmother and family members. They all, they all did art. And so I grew up that way. And then I waited till I was an adult and I wanted to do art school. So I got into art school. And when you are born into being an artist and the artist lifestyle, in your heart, you know what art is, what it can do for people and how it makes people feel and how to create it and how to use your heart, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So going, going to a school and having professors tell you, nah, it's not art. This is art. I was like, no, no, you're, you're confused, but like you're, you're an art school teacher. Like, come on now. So now, I became really. Why do decide what's art and what's not? I've never understood that. Yeah, like I don't understand that either. So I was really, really pissed off about it. You know, like here I am, a paying tuition, a paying to come here to go to the school and you're telling me what is or isn't art. And all we would do was walk around and look at buildings and look at shit that he would point out that to him was art. And it's like, no, I'm not interested. So I dropped out. I dropped out of art school and I suffered um, like a, an art block. Uh, I went 11 years without creating anything. 
I had stopped, I had stopped drawing. I had stopped, you know, doing like digital stuff, photography. I stopped that. I stopped doing pottery because I used to do pottery. I stopped everything. I just had died inside. And what and was you doing during that time though, if you wasn't doing art? You're going to laugh. I was playing World of Warcraft for 14 years. I just threw you're myself in the video. You're a big dude, so like I'm not saying big, but you're you're tall. I don't know how much you weigh, but you're we we talked about that earlier. You're, you're tall, and yeah. I just, when I think of World of Warcraft, I think of little bitty dudes that are just like fragile, and yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get a bunch of hate for that, but that's just how everybody that I've ever known that played World of Warcraft couldn't punch their way out of a paper bag and yeah so you you don't fit what i would think would be a world of war oh what is it um wow world of war wow yeah yeah i was a big time player i was there from the very start of it uh i played all through vanilla i played through uh, burning crusades uh, and through almost all the expansions except the last couple i just kind of gave up on it because it felt the same but I was a big time raider. I was doing molten core. Um, I have no clue yeah, what any was, of that means. I know, I know. But other people <laughs> might. They might. Yeah, you know, yeah. Y'all might. Vital like Buterin might know, you know, because he was a World of Warcraft player too, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. See, he looks like the type, of... though. He really looks like a, a, the the type of person <laughs> that I would picture as a gamer. <laughs> Well, as a World of Warcraft gamer, like I, I, I can picture that in my head. It Actually, you know, some of my favorite video games because I, I used to play a lot on PS4, and uh, a lot of my favorite games were Battlefield. Mm. I love being a sniper, and as a visually impaired person with bad eyesight, you'd think that guy can't be any good at playing those type of games. No, I used to be able to snipe people out of helicopters and. What? Like 700 meters away, right across the map. Yeah, there's a couple of videos on YouTube that my son saved where we were streaming on uh, Battlefield 3, I think, or Battlefield 4, and we had used a helicopter and landed on this windmill, and we were just picking people off off of a battleship. Wow. They're spot. We were camping them guys real bad. It was super fun. But yeah, no, I used to be a big time gamer. The last game that I really got into. Um, was Counter Strike Condition Zero, and it was so much fun. But I always picked like very small maps to to join, like uh, servers that were on small maps. Because every time that I picked like a big map, instant headshot. I would just run out there, and it's like, why am I even doing this? I'm just I'm helping y'all. <laughs> at this probably. point, I'm not even doing anything. I'm just helping the other team. Um, you were, you were probably, I was probably picking you off. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Could have. But yeah. it, it just, I, I, I love. I haven't game. gamed. I haven't gamed in a few years now, though. It's been ever since I started painting. Mm -hmm. I haven't played a video game ever since. It's been two and a half years. Oh, you're too busy. Too busy having too much fun creating art, man. Just having a blast. That's awesome. Well, let's um, let's yeah, let's jump into it, dude. Um. So, all right, we we talked about this earlier, and um, I'm gonna bring it up again. AI, AI art. Um. Yeah. I do want to talk about. What happened, uh, what was it, yesterday the, with the Facebook group? Yeah, yeah. so I was in a Facebook group, and it's a database of Canadian artists. And I know everyone has their own opinions. You know, everyone's entitled to it. And, and they just kept playing on to AI. And, and there was a post about, do you think Facebook and Instagram will create an app that automatically deletes AI images? And I was just like, man, why do these people care so much about what other people are doing? Aren't you artists? You know, like, get out there and create your own shit. Yeah. Put your own artwork out there. You know, like, just believe in yourself. Stop worrying about what other people think. And 
I think a lot of that happens here and, you know, on X too, like people get so caught up in it, right? Like mm -hmm. you see a lot of like negative posts about AI and, and I love it. I will take my own art and I will put it into the AI program and feed it to the machine and have it break it down and change it and shape it. And, you know, it's my own lines. It's not, it's not copyright material. It's something that I created with pen, ink, paper, paint, Photoshop tools. Like it's, it's my own, or I'll use my own photography too from my camera. And I'll put that in and I'll, you know, manipulate it into something else and then I'll work with that. And, you know, like it's just, you know, keep just doing your own thing and putting it out there in the universe. Stop worrying about it. One of the people see, that, are doing. That's one thing that I didn't even know. I haven't really gotten past mid journey. Um, so I didn't really, I don't even know if you can do that with mid, mid, uh, blah, mid journey. Um, I didn't know that you could put your own artwork in there. And I don't know if you can do it with mid journey, but what started it for me was Dally too. You were able to upload your own art and get variations from it. Right. And where I was already editing my pictures into painterlies, like doing digital art and changing it around through Photoshop and that program Topaz. I was like, well, I could do the same thing with AI. I could put my art in, change it to how I want, put it back into Photoshop, put it back into Topaz, play with the light, play with the filters. Same as like a painter does with their paintings, right? Mm -hmm. With their oil paintings, they're, they're constantly playing with the light. And, and you know, that's why I love Impressionism. You know, they're playing with the light and they're building the layers up and they're immersing you they into the piece of art, right? So like this piece of art right on here, this is from a photo. I took this with my camera. Wow. And I changed it Where into something that? else. Like, that's, a, that's a real location? That, that's a real location. That's uh, that's my hometown. I'm from a tiny little town called Sussex Corner here in Sussex, or here in New Brunswick, Canada. And uh, it's called The Bluff. Now, down in that little valley, you know, down in here, there's farms and there's farm fields and, you know, big rolling hills and, mm. you know, this is a cliff face. You can walk up to this big cliff spot and look out over the valley. And I just saw these trees and I was like, you know, I have to take this photo right here and snap it. And so I took the photo and it was autumn, as you can tell by the trees, mm -hmm. you know, the yellows and the reds and in the background there, it's all, you know, like nice colored trees and stuff. There's a little river down here that runs down through. And I just turned it into a cool piece of art. And I used photography and AI and Photoshop and Topaz. Now, just played with. I, I was thinking about this. Or, whoa, oh, um, speaking of AI, um, this isn't not necessarily art related, but um, I seen earlier that um, uh, Spotify said that they weren't going to remove AI music. So well, that's that they wouldn't. That's really good because there's a lot of musicians out there, you yeah. know, that are. I, I I created a song actually when I was experimenting earlier on with AI before immersing myself into this whole like painting and you know templates and changing my artwork. And I, I made a song. I don't know where it went, but I asked I asked three different AI. So I asked ChatGPT to write me a song about the 90s culture so it wrote this little song i took that song i put it into another ai that would sing it out and then i used another ai to get some beats and i compiled it all together and created a little song of an ai being singing the song wow yeah no, it's, there's so much cool shit that you can do with technology now like you, like you, you said you're 38 and I'm, I'm 42 do you remember being a kid and not having the internet, oh yeah, not having computers, having a TV that you had to get up to change the channel and didn't have a remote. Dude, I, I had remember bunny that. ears at one point, rabbit ears, yeah. with um, yeah, with like, aluminum foil yeah. on them. Like I, I know these youngins. I'm saying I sound like a country hillbilly. The young generation, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> they have no idea what I'm talking about when I say rabbit ears. But so doesn't that make you bullish though on what we're doing here in this yes. whole NFT space? Just you know, we are it's gonna be in ten years. In ten years time, I know. Like it's just it's crazy. And so I mean, like you're, you know, you're, 
you're writing, you wrote a whole song, and it's not even a real person singing it. Exactly. And they're doing movies now, too, like movies with AI. You know, it's just, it's not, it's not going away. It's, it's going to be a technology that sticks around for a long time. So when I saw that post, I'm like, I'm going to leave the group. And uh, so I did. And, and, uh, yeah, now, I'm open I, I, up to, I know all of it. Uh, Photoshop, they have their own AI now, right? I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it either. I'm still using 2019 Photoshop, like Photoshop. I just use the bare basics, you know, I have my topaz that runs through it and, but yeah they got their ai too and there's uh, there's all kinds of ai out there perplexity ai is another one that i like this is for you know getting information and statistics and all that stuff you know just ask it questions about face and you know you talk to it and it gives you the scientific equation and it, it's really cool man there's so much cool shit compared to when we were kids yeah i mean I, I was actually um, talking to somebody about this the other day. Um, I, I, was, I remember when I was a kid, um, the, the first full album that I got um, was Green Day's Dookie album. And I got that on ca uh, cassette tape. And, dude, I thought CDs were so cool. Like... I just knew that it was like the next big thing. And then I got a CD player because I begged my mom for one for Christmas. And she got me a, um, a one of the little portable CD players. Dude, that oh, yeah. was the worst thing that I ever got in my entire life. Because you could not move without that thing skipping. And I always like... I, I loved music growing up. Um, that's how, actually how I got into art. But, um, so, that right there, I was like, this is not it. Like, there, there's there gotta be a way for CDs to work. Like, because you, you, oh my goodness. I didn't see that yeah. one earlier. No, I'm showing you different ones now, man. I'm enticing you, I'm drawing you in. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, that's also my hometown too. That's from the bluff. And then I added the stallions and the clouds because the original clouds look like horses. So I'm like, I'm going to add them in there too and turn it into a painterly. And Yeah. So you live that's in wrong. paradise. That's paradise. Yeah, it is, man. I'm living in a city right now, but um, my hometown's about 45 minutes to an hour away. I usually get down once or twice a year. That's probably a good thing because I would never be inside if I live. I, I can't say that because where I live is pretty too, but I, I would never be inside if I lived in something like that. Well, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> beautiful. Draws you in, right? Like it's just. I have to, and you get to create it. Right. Is it what? Is that a little trail down there? Like, or is that a road? Yeah, this is a this is a trail right here, and then but this is a road over here with the little houses in the background. Oh, I actually, had, actually, right in this little spot where my cursor is, I had an uncle that used to live there in a house. So that's a, a little river piece, really. It talks yeah. about your family. Yeah. Now you yeah, told me earlier that um, uh, you had an uncle that was an artist. Is that is that the uh, is that the one? Does he? No, does he no. I can show you, actually. Let's see here. Open up this file. Um, I can show you my uncle's house. I'm going to do a piece with it. Um, I, I went on vacation to Quebec, and I took over 2,700 photos with my camera. So I'm still going through them all. That's a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. <laughs> I did a lot of photography. Is that a face a in the clouds up there on the left side? Face in the clouds on the left side. How far up? At the very top, like the top left corner. I don't see one. I, I don't think so. I see a, I don't know. 
I see two eyes and it looks like he's got a beard. Uh, maybe I'm seeing something that's not there. <laughs> hey, maybe. I don't know. In this actually in this file too, I have some like artwork that I had purchased from uh Tezos. Or no, from Zero One. I was on Zero One, I was collecting some artwork from there too. That's a controversial site right now too. Yeah, it is, man. And I figure, you know, your art, your rules. You can put your art wherever you want to. Mm-hmm. And you can also sell those zero one purchases on Campfire, which is a, a what Avax blockchain or something. So you can still you can represent the people that you're collecting. So you can list their artwork for whatever price you want, and then they get you know um, royalties for it. They get money from it. Yeah, and, man, and they can sell the royalties too, right? I, I was looking at it. And yeah. I, 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 what, what was it like? Thirty percent that you can go up to? Thirty percent royalties? No, I didn't. I didn't do much research into it. I got a couple pieces on there of other people. Um, was this what you're looking at right here? Maybe. I don't, I don't see know where you're at. Oh, <laughs> I'll just click on a piece. I don't know. Um, <laughs> this one. It'll open in Photoshop. Uh, I can barely see your mouse, man. I'm sorry. That's all good. You know how it is. <laughs> Here's a photo that I took while I was on vacation. Just another beach shot. It's not up. I still see the browser. Right. Oh, oh, right. I get what you're saying. I didn't share Photoshop. Okay. That's why I didn't see it. That's why you didn't see it. <laughs> We were, that's almost as bad as the muting incident. <laughs> All right. Well, that explains a lot. Uh, well, I guess just pick on one, click on one of these, I guess. This one's actually really cool to look at. This is just an original piece that I did, ink and watercolor. Super simple. Just playing around with line and color. That is beautiful. But the message behind it, the message behind it is, you know, it's, it's Mariupol in Ukraine, right? So... It's uh, that building's chances are it's no longer there anymore, right? Mm -hmm. What's happening to those people? And so I wanted to, I jumped on Google Maps and I went to Ukraine and I started capturing the places, the places that were being bombed and destroyed. And I just wanted to capture it through art so that there's like a memory of it. Like right? you said, so that might not even be there now. It might not. I don't know what. I haven't watched the news or had seen much what's on going on with Mariupol, but I mean that was one of the hard hit areas, wasn't it? So yeah. So I wanted to capture it through art, and, and I did. I did Mariupol. I did Kharkiv. I did Odessa. I'll show you the other one. That's it's just a way to. It's just a way to. I don't know. Preserve. Preserve it. We're preserving it through art. This one's Some Ottoman. Too. Yeah. This is Ottoman Kharkiv. This one's a really fun one. Wow. It's just a, a, it was a cable car park. Cable car. Yeah, park. And they had these, all these different colored cable cars, with people in them, and they were you know, up and down. So I just, the autumn colors, you know, I'm an autumn baby, like, I just was drawn into it, so I decided to capture it and create it. And this is the original. No edits, just actually put on Photoshop and sized and dropped in. Wow. Some early stuff, right? So, like, that's the other thing, too, with NFTs. Like, people are like, oh, you know, talking about scarcity and dropping, you know, pure, like, just different, slow it down, don't drop so much. And to me, it's like, well, why? Why would you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to have some of the artists' earlier works mm -hmm. to see how they, how far they progressed in their like art journey, right? Exactly. Like I don't draw, I don't draw this way now. Like it, it's completely different. Now it's more free and loose, or fast and loose, I call it. It's just more scribbling and more color, and you know, it's, this is just a part of my journey that people can collect and have. It's important. 
I feel that's that's probably one of the most important parts of, of an artist is their earlier mm-hmm. work because, like you said, you can see their um, the the evolution of the artist. And yeah, uh, I mean, people could collect that and collect one of your oh my goodness, collect one yeah. of your newer pieces and then compare it, like the the techniques and stuff between the two. That is incredible. Yeah, that's uh, that's my hometown again. Um, that's a stone bridge, and then in the background is one of the government buildings. And I actually, this is something that I had turned into postcards. Um, my aunt, she runs an Airbnb in my hometown of Sussex, mm-hmm. and she wanted to display my artwork. So she's got four pieces of my art, four pieces of the original art, and then she's got the uh, the prints that I do digitally on postcard and then she hands them out to her guests and then on the back of those cards is a qr code so they can link and check my art out check my web page out check out the nfts if they're interested and kind of get your art out there right you can do all kinds of little tips and tricks to sell your art now how did that feel when your aunt believed in your art that much to where she wanted to use it Ah, man, my family has been so supportive in this journey. Um, like, I didn't start out selling paintings, right? I started out selling, like, prints and prints on canvases and, and doing art auctions and stuff for, like, kids' benefits and mm-hmm. and char- charity events and stuff. And mm-hmm. to have your family believe in you and collect your work, it's just, like, it's awesome. And, like, they'll, they'll come to me sometimes, too, and they're like, you know, like, my Aunt Judy, she... Um, she she did it. She wanted a commission, and I'm like, okay. So I get one of their dogs had died. Something tragic had happened to one of their family pets, and she wanted because I had taken a picture of the dog one time, one year while I was there, and turned it into like this like painterly looking picture, kind of like illustrated art, and she wanted that for her husband. So I ended up doing a commission of that for her. Wow. You know. And and do they have it hanging up in their house now? Uh, yeah, they do. Good night, buddy. Have a good sleep. Oh. See you in the morning. <laughs> up late. Yes, sir. Yeah, they have it hanging in their house, and they have all these postcards in there um, that they give out to their clients and stuff, too. So their clients get basically a free piece of your art. Yeah, in a postcard. And she actually, she told me, or maybe it was my mom that told me, um, she had said that she had an artist stay at the Airbnb. And she was like, wow, that's really, really cool. Like, this guy's really talented. And, like, she took a couple postcards with her. So I don't know where she ever is from. I think she might have been from New York. I, I, I don't really know. But it's just cool. It's another way to connect with people and, you know, get your artwork out there and, have people see what you're building. Wow. Oh, but here's a, I'll show you this picture. This is a special one. This is what started it all. Oh, wow. Oh, what's this the story is what behind that? You said that started it all, so. Mm-hmm. So after I was diagnosed with glaucoma, after I lost the vision in my right eye, I I work at a, a kitchen and I can work takeout shifts. And you know, having a family of five and not being able to really afford much, right? You money is scarce. Mm-hmm. You know, it goes on bills and rent and clothing and food and you know all kinds of stuff, right? So I saved my tips from my kitchen job for four months, and I saved up fourteen hundred dollars. And I bought my very first DSLR. And I was taking pictures of everything. And then I was looking up astrophotography. And I saw a lens that I really wanted. It was uh, it was $650 at the time. And it's an ultra wide angle, uh, 16 millimeter, um, was it an F2, I think. And it you can really, it's a manual lens. So you can really draw in on the Milky Way. Mm-hmm. and capture stars and do time lapses and stuff. So 
I got into astrophotography. And this photo, I had just set up my camera in the adjacent yard to my parents' house in Sussex. So those trees on the side are actually from my parents' yard. Mm. And I captured the Milky Way. And now, this was before I even had started selling my artwork, right? So this was like five years ago. And I, uh, I just felt so small. You know, you're in this tiny universes of universes on this little blue dot floating through space. And you're trying to get seen and heard and... You know, here I am. I just, I just lost my eyesight, and I got diagnosed with glaucoma. And I'm like, you know, I can cry about it, mm-hmm. or I can show people what I can do, and that's what I've been doing ever since. Wow. You know, I've just been doing everything. Blind Chronicles is about exploring all forms of art, and being on that path is like spiritual enlightenment. It's an art journey. Now you I don't know where it's going, but I know that it's never going to stop till the day I die. You say exploring all forms of art. Um, I, mm-hmm. I, I, we, you did mention something uh, just just a little bit ago uh, that you was um, into pottery uh, before. Um, yep. Do you plan on getting back into that? Uh, yeah, I like I like pottery a lot. I like spinning with the wheel, and I like creating masks and uh, sushi dishes and stuff like that. That was really fun, but. I think where I'm getting into like painting for the past two and a half years, mm-hmm. uh, painting with watercolor and feeling it flow. And I'm going to be doing painting probably till the day I die and, and not just watercolor. Like I've been experimenting with oils and I've been experimenting with acrylics and gouache. And there's this other paint that I was looking at called casein, but it's like really expensive. I think it's like $212 for like five little tubes. Like it's just, Ooh crazy yeah it's, it's really crazy expensive like out of my budget obviously right, right now but um yeah i'm i do everything man i've done marbling i've done surface design i've done uh, like photo like photography working in the burn room or the, the dark room mm-hmm. with film i've done that now how was that uh, with your eyesight like how, how did that did that well, affect you at that time, at that time, my eyesight was fine. I didn't have any visual problems. My glaucoma only happened five years ago. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So I was like, I had to adjust to, you know, having that eyesight gone and the depth perception gone, and you know the little floaty stringers that float around in a good eye, and all the morning crap with the eye, and yeah. yeah, yeah, we 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 talked about it before, and we talked about it last time too, but. Yeah, glaucoma, you know, like, it can be tough. It can be hard, but, you know, you, I'm, I, there's nothing I can do to change it. Mm-hmm. I can't get surgery to fix it. It's it's past that point. So I just kind of go with the flow. It's out of my hands. I'm just going to keep doing what I do and connecting with people. And, I mean, I must be doing something right. <laughs> yeah. And I will tell you this, man. Um... I was supposed to be completely blind probably eight to ten years ago. So, well, no, I would say probably, yeah, about eight years ago at the most. Um, but I might have the de- the time wrong. I was supposed to be completely blind already. So doctors, I mean, they, they really can't tell you when it's going to happen. And yeah, I don't even like them to give me a time for uh, like a guess anymore because I used to go in there and be like, well, how much time do I have? And, um, you know, it, it was just bad. It wasn't good for me because every time they would end up, I had one, um, <laughs> it's so crazy. Um, I had one eye doctor. I went and it, it was my uh, my first time seeing this dude and I went in there and he looked at my eyes and you know did all the tests the normal glaucoma stuff and it's it was it, it, it blew his mind and he um he walked out and left the door open and 
the 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 nurse I guess I'm not sure what to call her um she was out there with him and dude I heard this man go if we don't get him into surgery now he's gonna be blind in a month dude I started crying and I was like y'all need to shut the fucking door before y'all say that and oh, wow. dude it messed me up I started bawling because that hurt, you know, like, a month? Like, what the heck? And so they shut the door, and I was, like, kind of too late now. Shoot, like, good gosh. But that it really bothered me. And so after that, I was like, I'm never asking anybody ever again, like, how long I have until I'm blind. Because... I do not want to go through that again. My, I'm, I'm a Christian, and my pastor is the one that took me to the eye doctor that day. And yeah. when I came out crying, like that dude jumped up and was like, what's going on? And that's when I told him, I was like, I'm going to be blind in a month. Dude, the look on his face, like it was pure sadness. And... All he did was hug me. And, like, I'm about to yeah. tear up now talking about it. But... Like, that's emotional stuff, man. Man, it, it hurt so bad. Um, but at that point, I was like, they don't know. They cannot give me an idea, even, like, a, a guesstimate of when this is going to happen. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen while we're on this, you know? And for yeah. both of us, though. Like, it's not just yeah. me. And... So I, I I I don't ask anymore because I don't want to know. Um, I don't want to I don't want to dwell on it either. I don't feel that's good for anybody, and it doesn't inspire no. people either. And that's you know that's one of my goals. So yeah. you know it's really inspiring though. I don't know if you know. There's a lot of famous artists that had vision problems. I've heard that. I haven't really looked into it. Um, before I got in. Before I met you, because, like, I thought I was alone. Like, to uh, the point to where I was, I, I even questioned it. I was like, dude, am I lying? You know, well, Monet is one of them. No way. Yeah, Monet has vision problems. Um, another one is Sarji Man. He was a really awesome artist that did like lab, uh, abstract landscape stuff. He's a really fabulous painter. And he lost his eyesight, so he ended up painting blind. There's another artist that was born with no eyes, and he's a painter, and he's fantastic. It's You can still do it. You can still be creative and let that creative juice is out. You know, that's another reason why I love artificial intelligence. Mm. You know, like, when you... I don't know what the future holds, right? Like, I don't know, tomorrow, like you said, you know, I could wake up tomorrow, and, and boom, my left eye is gone. Mm-hmm. It happened. It happened with my right eye. It could happen with, with my left eye. Yep. You just never know. So with AI, you can sit on there and you can. If you lose your eyesight, all you're taking is your words. You're taking your feelings from inside you, what you're feeling, and you're putting it in a prompt, and it's generating some images. And with the technology that we have today, you can do descriptive audio. Mm-hmm. So you get, you know, there's probably going to be an AI program that releases the tells you what you're looking at what you're seeing mm. and once you get the visual in your head of what you created through your words you can connect to your art connect to it and you can sell that you know you can market it you can put yourself out there so the future is not going to like stop for us when we lose our eyesight yeah i don't think so no it's not, you know it's not it's going to be hard as fucking shit like <laughs> i'm going to be cracking some toes and probably break some walls by bumping into them but you know like it's just and i mean it might not happen it might not there's that possibility it just you know you just you kind of have to just live with it deal with it and just love yourself that's the best way i've ever heard glaucoma described i know you didn't describe glaucoma but you experience you 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 describe the experience and yeah that's amazing but um, one thing about, um, and I know we're not talking about your artwork right now, and I'm sorry, but this is important. Um, one thing that really bothers me about Web3 is 
the blind community is probably going to get left behind. And because a lot of the apps, I don't know if you've noticed, like I can't use crypto.com at all because I can't, I'm, my, my phone, it, you know, it's an app. And yeah. um, my phone where I have the font zoomed in so much, it, everything like bunches together and I can't read the numbers. And I mean, I could use my, uh, what is it, the text to speech or whatever that stuff mm -hmm. I could use that but I don't like it I don't want to have to rely on that like um and it's kind of weird because when I was at the um school for the blind in Richmond Virginia um everybody was using that and I'm like how do y'all understand it like that it was so <laughs> fast and they're like well you get used to it and I'm like well I, I don't have time to sit down and just have my phone say gibberish because that's what it sounded like and yeah, I, I'm that I feel like they're getting left behind because a lot of uh, a lot of uh, companies in this space are they they're not they don't care really. Well, no, I can't say they don't care. They don't think about stuff like that. Um, and a lot of it's not accessible. I hate to say it. Yeah, and it's I feel like that goes against the ADA, so that might be a problem in the future. Well, that actually brings up a pretty good thing. Um, I'm a member in my local area of a group called uh, the NB Disability Art Collective. Mm. Uh, we actually we actually had our own show two years ago at, uh, at the gallery. I had I think I had eleven or fourteen pieces of my art put in, and you know we had we were sponsored by our city. They paid for like different parts of it like the signs and and uh yeah we were on the ctv news so we were on tv we, were, we made the news channel and it's just a whole bunch of artists with disabilities where there's a whole bunch of us like i have glaucoma there's a girl i know she's she's colorblind uh another girl she had suffered a stroke when she was younger and so she's in a wheelchair and you know she's still out there man she's still out there creating art she's still chasing that art dream and you know like just because some people some people look at us and that's that's a hard part to deal with in web 3 too is like i don't know if you've experienced it but if it's like that imposter syndrome mm -hmm. you know people people look at your artwork and they feel bad for you because of your impairment that's what i tell you know, people they, i'm like don't feel sorry for me because i don't feel sorry for myself yeah you know and sometimes you get like like did they just buy that piece of artwork because they felt bad or are they really connected to it and and it's a hard thing to get past but once you do get past that that people actually do like your like your artwork it, you're better for it you know it's a so hopefully there's like people if they're out there and they're, they're listening to this and you know they have that disability and they're, they're like well i want to create art i want to i want to be free you know, i just want to self-express you know, yeah, you can. You got all kinds of tools at your disposal. You got paper. You got, you know, you got paint. You got mm -hmm. photography. You got, there's so many of us out there that have disabilities that are still able to chase that art dream. That makes me and think that's, about my friend. Um, his name is uh, uh, Logan Abdo, and he actually screams in a metal band called Lo L O. Um, dude's in a wheelchair, and like. Um, I'm not sure what's what's actually going on, um, but ever since he he's always been in a wheelchair for I mean as far as I know, but um, the dude like he's got pictures of him playing drums. His legs don't even work, dude. Like yeah, you you find ways around it, right? You gotta find ways to let that art out, let that music out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just because just, just we have a disability doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to stop and hum it's and haw about it. We're just going we're, we're to fire on and keep going, right? I mean, it's, and it's been, it's been a blessing for me. Like, it's, like you say, superpower, right? If your eye loss is your superpower. And it's like, yeah, I agree because it's given me courage. It's given me motivation. It's inspired me to get off my ass from playing video games and start creating my artwork again. And it's pushed me out there. Like the summer, 
Like I got three pieces of art currently. One was in a museum. Like the, all three of them were in a museum, mm-hmm. and now now they're in a gallery and a cafe. And then in the winter time, they're going to another little museum. Wow! And the, the whole show was artists with disabilities. You know, so wow. it's it's opening doors, right? And it was a. I was just asked if I'd be interested in it. It's not even a Web three event. It's it was traditional art. You know, so like people like and people like to crap on traditional artists and they talk about gatekeeping and all that stuff, right? But mm-hmm. you know, most most of my success in being an artist has been traditional, and yeah. So I mean, you just got to keep going, keep believing in yourself. You know, and the, the key thing I tell people too is like, you know, I grew up watching Bob Ross on TV. Bob Ross was the happiest man in the world. He was, and one of the key. Things it was. And one of the key things that I always got from his art was, you know what? Just have fun with it. There's no the mistakes. Is, Happy little yeah. trees. Like, I love that, dude. Yeah, no, I love Bob Ross, too. I'm actually friends with one of his uh, his friends that is on Instagram. And he's actually was in a couple TV shows with him. Uh, David Jester, I think is his name. Oh, David wow. Jester? Something, something Jester. Now, yeah. Isn't and his actually, son, Bob Ross's son's an artist too now, right? Albert, yeah. He was, he's was. he been on a couple episodes of The uh, Joy of Painting too. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, they played Bob Ross. They played Bob Ross there. Anyway. Not, not his son, but the, the people that had that brand. But we won't get into those details. It's on Netflix. You guys can watch it. And yeah. Have your own opinion, but... But yeah, oh, this piece here, I, I want to talk about this for a bit. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at it, man. It's what, What's going on? Are there... So this piece, this piece is called Low Tide Rocks, and I'm a big beach person. I love the ocean. Like, I used to fish on it. I used to fish lobster, like a fourth generation fisherman, and it is just, it's part of who I am. Like, it's all blood, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was on the beach. And we had, it was during lockdown, one lockdown, I think we had a couple of them. And we had taken the kids to a cottage just to get away, get out of the city. And we were on this beach and the tide was going out. And this beach has all these different colored stones. And my kids, I could hear them laughing in the background. And the tide was going out and it was going over my feet. And I was just had my camera around my neck and I snapped this photo. And this is from a photo, like a photo image, right? This is photography turned into uh, digital painterly. And once I was editing it and seeing all the colors pop out and all the shapes, and I started seeing other things in it too. So it kind of reminds me of like abstract. Cause I don't know if you can see it, but I see an elephant in there. An elephant. So it's kind of, yeah. So I got my little cursor here. Here's the elephant's eye right here where the sand is. Here's its ear. As it loops up over it, and this long trunk coming down, and there's his legs, and then his body's up here. Yeah, so I kind of captured like what felt like an elephant. You know, when I, like was, when I was sitting here piece. looking at it, um, I I didn't see the the beach scene. Now I do, um, but what I thought it was was like um. Uh, like stuff being I don't even know how to describe it Um, alright I'm going to describe it the best way that I can Um, Mm -hmm. it's not going to be right just letting you know Um, (laughs) art's open to interpretation right I thought that um, and again it's the only words that I know to use I thought the rocks were being like raptured like they were (laughs) like uh I thought the rocks were like floating up. I didn't uh, see the 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 sand. I thought that was like sky. And yeah, no. Everything was getting like it was floating up. So this is an aerial view of a beach. Yeah. And you can't see it in a photo, but down below, you know, out of the frame is my, my feet. And I was just like, this is really cool to stamp. So actually I did a I did a draw on this piece in my Facebook group because I also that's before I got into NFTs I ran my own group and still do 
and I did a draw. I printed it on canvas, and uh, the person that picked it up, interestingly enough, she is friends with Paris Hilton, and she has it. She has it hanging in her house. She's actually a, a model and a photographer, and has her own business. So she wanted. She we ended up connecting because I was watching that documentary that Paris Hilton was in, and it was talking about her friend Jess and uh, Jessica. Jessica Pike is her name, and I had reached out because I really liked her photography and. You know, I had done some digital edits of her work, and uh, we, we became friends, and we're our friends on Facebook, and she's got my artwork hanging in her house. Wow. It's really cool. It's just stuff that I don't really talk about in Web3, right, because I don't want to use the fact that Paris Hilton follows me, and, you know, John Cena follows me, and Gary Vaynerchuk follows me, and, you know, all these big people in this space at the time, mm-hmm. and even still, are you know, like connected in some way. And that's know? the beauty of it though. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're, they're all here for, for art and yeah, like Jerry salts, you know, like that guy, like people have a lot of, there's a lot of heat going on around him right now, but you know what? Now, he what critiqued later. You, you said that earlier. Um, I, I, I forgot about that. Well, what's, what's, I haven't, I haven't, I don't know what's going on. What's, what's going on with that? Uh, well, Jerry Saltz had just done like a, a quick little half sentence on um, Paul Reed's artwork from Minotaur that he is in currently in the show with right now. And it just said, this is horrendous. And people were like, well, what is he talking about? Like, why such a, this is a New York art critic. And, and I was like, what you guys are failing to understand here is you guys are getting heated up over this, but guess what? It's building controversy. It's building mm-hmm. interaction are looking at that artwork now people more eyes are on that artwork because of that comment right Mm -hmm. so so art critics are not exactly always bad they're not always going to be good either right like they know how to work a crowd and i think that's what jerry's doing right like i think it's bringing more eyes to paul's artwork because of that post and look you know, at the Mona Lisa. That. that was stolen. If it wasn't stolen, it wouldn't be as iconic as it is right now because nobody would really know about it. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of stuff like that throughout the history of art. So, wow. yeah. That's, that's really a compliment when somebody says stuff like that, um, especially somebody on that level. Yeah, like he critiqued my artwork and it wasn't even anything bad and it was just like, I just got critiqued by the same guy that critiqued Andy Warhol's artwork. Mm-hmm. That's that's what played through my head. It's like, holy shit, you know? Now, how did you yeah. sleep at night that day? <laughs> A lot of my uh, my traditional art friends are like, no way. And I showed them because it was like on Twitter, right? And there's in the comments and I was like, yeah, what way? And they were like, oh my God, that's so amazing. And, I'm like, yeah, it's cool. And they're like, oh, you should use that in marketing. And I'm like, well, I don't really want to do that because, you know, I just, I think it's like playing on, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to use people that way. I want, I want my art to be the reason people collect my art. And I'm pretty oh, sure that wasn't the reason. Oh, look at that booty. There's <laughs> all kinds of stuff on here. This is my Blind Chronicles collection on OpenSea. <laughs> There's all kinds of crazy shit in here. Um, it's just like an experiment one. I got some watercolors in here too. I've traded three Ethereum worth of artwork from this one, mm. which is really cool. At that time, Ethereum was like 4,000. So it was, you know, a nice chunk of change. But, uh, especially when you yeah. get kids, that, that helps out a whole lot, I'm sure. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Uh, now, are your kids a... into art? You know what? My kids are all into art. Um, yeah, they. My my twenty two year twenty two year old son. He likes to draw. He he does a lot of Spider Man. And my fourteen year old daughter, she draws like anime characters. And my eight year old son Emmett, that you heard earlier, mm-hmm. he uh, he likes to draw. And I've actually, <laughs> I'll show you this actually. Uh, wait a sec. Uh, we did a collection of his little characters. Oh, wow. And it's called Emmett's Little People Collection that we put on OpenSea. And we traded 0.11, like 
I don't have any listed right now, but just these little people, little, little people that he created when he was younger. And I turned them into NFTs. Now, how old was he when yeah. he did that? Uh, I think this one was two years ago, so he would have been like six years old. Yeah, six-year-old son. So it's right in the description. That is good. Yeah, like he creates these little characters. And now, actually, like he's so interested in art that he's taught himself stuff that even I don't know how, how to do. Like he's taught himself how to do animation using a program called Scratch. And he's teaching himself how to design video games like um, Geometry Dash is a game that he plays a lot, and he's been creating his own levels and doing editing of levels, and he's creating like he's just At eight kids years are old? eight years old, yeah. And that's another reason why I'm so hell bent on NFTs and digital, right? Because kids are learning this stuff right now. What we're doing is we're the pioneers of an art revolution. Mm-hmm. We're the builders. We're the early adopters. We're the one that are onboarding people, and we're getting people interested. You know, say my kids grow up, right, and they'll have my artwork that I created at this time in my life, and maybe they can sell it, and they can use it for themselves. And then, you know, they can even have their own artwork put onto the blockchain and and immortalized, right? And, you know, I think this is just the future. Like, you know, we want to be against fiat and stuff right like we're, we're all like crypto and it's just it gives people a fighting chance i think is what i like about crypto i feel like i mean i like, don't get me wrong i love crypto i love everything about it like the the self-custody and all that being in charge of your money um mm-hmm. i love that but I also believe that we're going to have to have a way for people, and, and a lot of exchanges are doing this. Um, we're going to have to have a way for everyday people to use the dollar because they're not going to want to use Ethereum. They're not, they're not going to want to have, like, the, a lot of people don't know how to create, uh, how to use a wallet, you know? Yeah. So, so like, and what I like to do, too, is, you know, I'll have a lot of my traditional friends from Facebook and they'll send me a message and they'll be like, okay, I just got an offer on Instagram for my artwork in an NFT. And for, I looked it up. The price is like $10,000. Like, what do I do? How do I do this? And I'm like, now look, like it sounds, if things are sounding too good to be true, chances are it's too good to be true. That is probably a scam and I wouldn't be getting involved with it. Mm-hmm. So I will... I have a website and I'll send them to my blog page where I describe, actually bring it up here, where I um, talk about like what is NFT, you know, how they get started. Yeah, I'm all over the place on the internet. Yeah, see what are NFTs and why do I keep hearing about them? And it's just a blog, it's got 39 views and you know, I created that in January. It's just a nine-minute read, but it explains how to get started. And it's, you can click on the link and tells you it takes you right to MetaMask. I said to people, get into OpenSea because then you could have their lazy minting program. Mm-hmm. You know, which they're stopping now, but um, it gives people you get that get mint once, and then you can just keep minting and putting your art out. Work, art Somebody work told me um, Manifold is implementing lazy minting. I, I hope they do. Like, I, I have a manifold contract, too. Like, I'm all over the place. I'm, like, on Maker's Place, and, you know, I'm, I'm not on Super Rare. I, I turned that down, actually. I had turned it down when I was offered it. Really? I kind of, yeah, I'm kind of kicking myself in the ass over that, though, really. Was it um, space, or? Well, I had said to the person that was talking about onboarding me, I think we were in that topic that discussion too i think it was Hervé or mm-hmm. i can't pronounce his name but uh he had mentioned it and i was like uh, at this time i'm just not ready to get into super rare i'm going through like changes in my art and i just i don't want to be on that platform right at this moment mm-hmm. and i mean i kind of wish that i had done it and got on there because i really like super rare mm-hmm. i like how um it's more geared towards my genre of art you know, you see a lot of that stuff on there, but 
you know, I'm also on Maker's Place and I'm on Object through Tezos and I'm on Solana, like Exchange Art. I got stuff there too. And uh, yeah, I'm just all over the place. <laughs> and you know, that's that's the beauty of uh, what we do with Web3. It, it doesn't really matter what platform you're on, what marketplace. It really doesn't matter because um, everything's on chain anyways. And I can show you. I can show you guys this. This was cool. This happened just recently. I don't know if you heard about it, but I got my art put into like a heavy foam uh, e-magazine. What? Yeah. yeah, it's got all these little, it's got so many artists in here. I think it's a, you know, it's just an NFT thing. It's got all these artists. You can check them out. They've got questions in there. You can zoom in on. It's in my, uh, in my link tree. There's just so many, you know, Trevor Jones, so many big names in the NFT space, right? And, and like, uh -huh. you know, I got my art. I got a two pager in here. Oh, like, down with the most likes. I see. Like, hate. it's just. Yeah, like, look at this stuff. I'm trying to scroll up to my page and go and pass some cool art stuff, but, you know. Brown to pink. I'm friends with her. Empress Trash is in here, too. And Woman NFT, she's in here. I'm like, friends with there's her. just so many. Yeah, I've been friends with these people forever, man. Yeah, there's just so many good names. I'm scrolling through. Just want to get to my page to show you the art, Pixel Lord. It's just, I, I can't remember how many pages they said there was. I know you can see some of app. Crypto Warrior, he's another good dude that I like. I you know, he's been friends with him. Really, he's, he's been around for a long time. I should People probably do more research on artists. <laughs> There's, there's right there. Look, it's a two, two leg spread. You know, wow. like it's just. And this is while I was experimenting with um, abstract landscape art, mm -hmm. and uh, I had discovered an artist called Nicholas De Stahl and Egon Shale, and I was like, I really like these people's works. So this is actually an image from Google Maps that I drew out on paper and painted and took a picture and finished with AI and digital. It's uh, it's in Newfoundland here in Canada. It's called Jelly Bean Row. All these different buildings have different colors. And mm. It just really pulled me in. So I just created it. That reminds me yeah. of um, when I was like 16, I want to say. Um, I went to Houston, Texas. And they have a road like that where um, all the buildings are different colors. And where I grew up in North Carolina, everything is like brick. Like brown bricks or gray yeah. sand blocks. And then I see all these buildings with all these bright colors and I'm like, whoa. Like, y'all can do yeah. this. Is, it, it, people can do this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cool. know that, that was a thing. And I, I grew up in like a very small town and it's a little country town. And yeah, it, so seeing stuff like that, oh my goodness. Yeah, there's some amazing artists in this magazine, like, and the articles are really good to read. Oh, there's there's Max Osiris, he's in here too. Yeah, <laughs> I love that dude. There's so much cool stuff, man. Wow. And it's just it's anonymous nobody. He's in here. One of my favorite people in this space, right there. First person to ever reach out and interact to me, and he you know, he's collected my work. He's bought. Uh, my physical t-shirts that I made with another collection that I'll, I'll bring up here in a minute. And, uh, yeah, he bought the physical shirt for it. And, you know, huge supporter. Here's another big supporter of my work, too. I love this person. Like, their artwork is just so phenomenal. Wow. <laughs> no, man. Like, and that's what is the awesome about Web3 in this community, man. There's just so many artists to check out. You can now, never be bored. Who was the first person to ever like share your art when you got into crypto art or NFTs or whatever you want to call it? Well, I remember the I remember that too, and I had this. Uh, I posted about NFTs, and I started talking to Rob Ness. Actually, mm -hmm. he was the very first person that I interacted with in the space, mm -hmm. and That's so he had one. commented. 
he had commented on one of my pieces and one of his collectors was like, holy shit, like you're new to this space and Rob Ness is commenting on your posts and he ended up like buying my artwork. And, and it, I was new to NFTs, right? So I didn't know how auctions worked and I had put an auction and I didn't have the, the covering cost to pay for it. So I canceled it and I, I just gave the guy the piece of artwork, right? I'm like, I don't know how to do, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm doing. So <laughs> just think, Take just take the artwork. Here you go. Like, don't worry about paying me. Like, you connected to it. Like, it's yours. So I gave it to this guy, and he loved my artwork so much that he wanted to like support me. And so he found me on Fine Art America, and he's like, "Is this you?" And I'm like, "Yeah, man. My art is like literally all over the internet. If you look up my name, it's it's everywhere." Mm -hmm. And so he ended up buying a piece of a canvas for his. Um, wife's studio or wife's house, wife's garage or something, one of her rooms. And like, so he supported me by buying a physical piece of my art. Wow. And it was all because Rob Ness commented on my posts on Twitter, you know, or X. Mm -hmm. And we've followed each other after a while. Like, he's a really good dude. I own some of his pieces too. But the second person was Anonymous Nobody. And yeah, he really connected me to a lot of other artists. He told me about NFT Lisa and her watercolor work, and he told me about uh, Romance and Ales, Amelia Draws, and her watercolor artwork, and I connected with those people, and I, I fell in love, and I discovered more about myself as an artist by looking at other people's artwork and being like, just so like, oh my god, I want to create like this, I want to do that, I want to, I want to do this, can I try that? And, you know, that's what Web3 has to offer people, you know, unlike the traditional world. You don't have to leave your house. You know, if you're an introvert like myself, I don't have to leave my house to connect to art. I can sit in my studio. I can smoke my cigarettes. I can smoke a joint. I can drink my pop, drink my coffee, whatever, listen to music and just kind of lose myself in the art. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing for the past, well, since 2021 when I got into NFTs. That's awesome. Yeah, the first person that ever um, actually... It was kind of wild how it happened for me. Um, I had Twitter, but I never used it. Like, uh, I think I created my account in like 2009. And before I got into NFTs and crypto art or whatever, and it just, I never used it. And the first person to ever share my art or my story or whatever, because I was, I, I wanted to introduce myself. I felt like, I, oh, there he is. But mm -hmm. I, I felt like I needed to tell my story so that way people could know who I was. And the first person to ever um, share my, my work was um, uh, 6259 or. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. That, that actually yeah. led to my first sale to Trent North. Thank you, Trent. Um, Pretty awesome. That, that was incredible, dude. Like I, 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 I listed it for I think it was zero point zero one five, I believe, and yeah, it was. I was so happy about that. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, man. When you can, you know, you don't have a li like you have a limited budget. You're not making a lot of money, and you can put your artwork on there as an NFT, and you don't have to go to the bank. You don't have to. You know, you just put it out there in the universe, share it, connect to it, you know, connect to people. And, you know, like there was, there was one, I have a collector and a great guy. Uh, I'm not going to say his name right now, but um, I was sitting in my studio and so in, I'll go back in my studio. There's a note on my wall that my wife put there when I started getting into NFTs. It's still on my wall today. I turned it into an NFT and I sold a couple of editions of it. But she put she put nerd room where all the fake internet money gets made, y'all. <laughs> or all the dollar bills. Y'all. So that's on my wall in my studio, and it's been there since I started. So it's been there for almost two and a half years. And I had I was sitting in my studio. And my email kept going off. It was OpenSea. OpenSea. This is 2021, right? So this is like the this is the rise of NFTs. Mm -hmm. And I got 11 emails from OpenSea in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I made Jesus. What was it? Uh, $3,600 in art sales. 
right? And I'm like, holy crap. So I like messaged my wife and I, at the time, like I didn't have photo ID, so I couldn't transfer the money out. So one of my friends, he, he that got me into NFTs, he, uh, I sent him the money and I told him he could keep like a, you know, a percentage of it or whatever for like his taxes and all that stuff. Right. So he's like, Oh sweet. Yeah. So like he hooked me up and, you know, I ended up putting two grand in my wife's wallet, like on her bank account. And I'm like, go check your bank account. And she's like, what's that from? And I'm like, Oh, that's, that's from my fake internet money. <laughs> that was, Chris, that was Christmas for the kids. Right. So just, that happened just around that time, close to Christmas, and because uh, of fake internet, I was like, "Some fake internet money." She's like, "Well, what are you doing talking to me? Get back down to your studio and start making some more artwork. Get back down <laughs> to the nerd room. Yeah, back to the nerd room. Keep <laughs> going." I wouldn't even call so, yeah. it. I wouldn't even call it your studio anymore. I'd just call it the nerd room. Well, you know, it is the nerd room, man. Like, I've got. When I lost my eyesight in my right eye, I went crazy. I started collecting things from my childhood. Mm. And, like, I'm not just an artist. I'm an art collector, and I collect toys, and I collect all kinds of cool shit. I got almost all of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle line. No way. The action figures. I got the turtle van. I got, like, you know, I got April O'Neil. My stepson gave me that for Christmas one year. Um, I got all kinds of turtle memorabilia. I got T-shirts, and I got... I just got so much, man. And, you know, I even got, like, telescopes and stuff in here, too, because I was into the Astro. But, no, it's, it's a nerd room. You know, I got a lot of books, and I'm a, I'm a pagan, so I got that kind of stuff over there, like my spiritual stuff. Mm -hmm. I got stones, gemstones that I collect, and precious, you know, like little little items. Yeah, it's, it's my nerd room. And actually, you know, it's really cool. When we moved into this place, we, we rented duplex. Mm -hmm. And we were living in a house, but the, the landlord had sold it. And we were going through that, like, oh, my God, we got to move a family of five. And what are we going to do? We got a dog. And it's, it's hard to find places to rent to have dogs allowed. And mm -hmm. we were under a lot of stress. And, you know, I put a lot of that out there on Twitter, too, at that time. But I... Uh, we found this place and I'd talked to the landlord and he's like, you know, what's really crazy is that in the seventies, the original owners of this place, there was an artist who lived in it. And my studio is his studio now, or was his studio. Wow. So, so when we got here, there was already an overhead light for if you're painting on an easel, you know, so that's already in here. There was a sink in here so you can wash your brushes and, so like I'm I'm sitting in a studio that another artist used to create art in, and that is just that's powerful shit, man. Wow. Like, I don't know what I don't know who the artist was. I don't know what they created, but I'll I'm try to find in, out. Can, does your I know. I, I don't think he knows. He just knows that an artist had lived here, like from the '70s. And I was like, There's that is just the coolest thing. To find out. Right? Like it's just. Man, the universe, man, it just, when you throw yourself into it and you believe in yourself and good things just come your way, dude. like today, you imagine know, like that. This. Imagine this, you, you find out who that artist is, buy a piece of their work and hang it up in your studio. Yeah. That's Wouldn't that like, be cool? Like, in his studio. yeah, full circle wow. for sure. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's pretty cool. That we're not even See, talking I, about your art. This is the artist. Well, we are talking about you though, so that is the artist spotlight. So, yeah, we're doing art. <laughs> yeah, I can go to this collection that I did earlier that we were talking about because this is kind of a, a really cool. To, I wanted to do that one. Um, actually, this is one that really. I, I do want to show. Um, there, there's one. Um, in particular, that I, w I want to show. Um, the one that made me sad. One that made you sad? Of the... Uh, From the muses, muses of my life one? Yeah. Uh, I believe it was my your ex, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one. Yeah. That's the affliction. That one. Yeah. Oh, All man. right. 
so this collection uh, is inspired by Pablo Picasso and his muses that he had throughout his life. And I was watching a documentary because when I'm not making art, I'm watching documentaries and I'm watching tutorials and I'm just watching and living, breathing art. So I came up with the idea from watching that, the inspiration to create the muses of my life. Mm. So this is an ex-girlfriend of mine named Beth. And I had met Beth years ago in my past. And she, um, you know, sweet girl, nice person. Uh, something bad had happened. And we had ended up splitting up. You know, life happened. Um, at the time, my my son was being born after I had found out that he was actually my son and not my friend's kid. So I decided I had to do the right thing. I had to, I had to go be a dad. I had to go step up and, you know, like we were fighting, me and his mom, and but we had to, this would be my first child, so I wanted to work it out with her. Mm-hmm. And so I broke up with Beth, and she understood. Like, she knew... She was sad, but she understood. You know, you want to be a family. And uh, so Beth had gone on t- to marry somebody, and she wasn't happy, and she gained a bunch of weight, and she became super depressed, and she got into drugs. And and then she got divorced, and then she moved away, and then she became a prostitute on the streets in Calgary. And... I only know this from like, you know, like connecting oddly enough through, and there's actually, she, you can look her up online and it says like, there's some, some mean person put a mean piece of information about this person that she's a thief. And Mm. so I created this art. Yeah. Like, it's really sad. Like, I don't know what happened to Beth now. Like, I don't know if she had turned her life around. I don't know if she's even alive anymore. I don't, I don't know because I don't really stay connected to a lot of exes. Right. So I wanted to create a piece of artwork that told a story. Mm -hmm. So using AI, because this is all AI, I didn't draw any of this stuff. This is all from my words and connecting to it and building a story from ChatGPT. Wow. Based based off my own prompt. And this is like when AI just kind of like, this is, I dropped this in January of this year. So, um, yeah. And AI, that, that's that's really early. I know it don't sound like it, but that that was in the AI yeah, this world. Was, that was like way back. <laughs> yeah, this was this was Dally two. This was Dally two that I created this with. Oh. Just you know different, different prompts and stuff, and I really connected to it. And then I put it in Photoshop, and obviously I had to change it and add different lighting and clean it up. And but I just connected to it. So I wanted to write a story about. Beth and I mean I read it last time and I, I'll read it again like it's I don't know what happened so I, I wrote a story that said um, Beth's life was consumed by drug addiction she turned to prostitution to support her habit she lost everything her home friends self respect she was consumed by her addiction but one day she decided to seek help she enrolled in a rehabilitation program and worked hard to overcome her addiction and with the support of the therapist and fellow patients she was able to kick the habit and turn her life around She got a job, an apartment, and started to rebuild her relationships. And she was able to regain her self-esteem and self-worth. Eventually, she was able to look back at her past with a sense of gratitude for the lessons it taught her and for the person she had become. And I don't know what happened to the girl, but this was my way of taking my feelings from my past and putting it out there for people to connect to. Because everybody has an ex. Everybody has a person that inspired them or had a muse in their life, you know, if you're an artist. And I wanted to create that. And I I think I did well. Because this, this actually, this collection uh, was featured on OpenSea on their website and on Instagram. Mm. Um, This collection was actually up there with, like, you know, Fuo, you know, Ferocious and all these big names in, like, the NFT space, right? And, And there's my artwork just hanging out. Just hanging out, you know. Dorcom, uh, a good friend of mine, NFT Lace's husband, he messaged me. He's like, "Do you know you're featured in OpenSea right now?" And I'm like, "What? <laughs> what are you talking about?" Like, no, I, I don't know, <laughs> really. And this is the piece that they had put in. This one here. This is actually my uh, my son's mom, Candace, the manipulator. 
that was the, and I gave them all little names like Candace the Manipulator, Beth the, the Addict, and stuff. It was just part of my past, and people get to connect to it. Mm. And, and you know, some people did, like you know, I, like I showed you earlier about uh, you know the one I did with my wife. Like this is Tiffany the Flame. This is my wife. Someone has this listed on secondary at twenty two Ethereum. It's worth it. Yeah. That's thirty five thousand US. It's worth it. Yeah. Like it's it's history. Somebody you know, like this it. collection. If if you're looking this at collection. this right now, go buy it if you got the money. It's worth it. Right. Like and there's still there's still stuff available for sale in this collection. These are the only ones I have left right here, this this row, minus Tiffany. And what is the you know, I got, uh, the price is zero point zero five Ethereum, you know, like uh and these are some of my exes. This is like my my recent ex right here. This is Tony, the service tech. She worked in a um, in a parts delivery store in Alberta. And uh, let's do the piece of artwork over her too. Right. So she's no. got like metal and you know. Have any of them seen these? Yeah, uh, actually. Yeah, I'll show you a person that really, really loved it. I'll show you. Uh, yeah, there's so many of them. <laughs> this this one right here. This one right here. This is Ray, my friend Rachel. She's been a long time friend of mine ever since elementary school. Mm. And we're still friends to this day. And I turned her into a muse. And she loved it so much that she bought one of my t-shirts that I printed on for physical merch. Wow. So, yeah, like, so this piece got sold. The NFT sold and the, the t-shirt sold, too. Now, Beth, that one's not for sale, right? That's already sold. Yeah, so the only one that, the only ones that are for sale are um, Krista, the hairdresser, and Lindsay, the stylist. Lynn the Stalker. That was a, a story I should probably tell you guys too because it's kind of funny, kind of creepy. Uh, Maddie, Mary, Nicole, Raylene, Tony, Tracy, and well, I mean, this one is my my grandmother. You know, everybody, they're not just exes that inspire me. It has a different price on this one. I've listed it at 0 0.1 Ethereum, mm -hmm. but it's a piece of my grandmother. She was an artist too, right? And she inspired me a lot growing up because I grew up, you know, like hanging out, playing Scrabble and playing Nintendo and playing Atari. And we were always around Grammy. She was she was the matriarch in our family. She kept everybody together. You know, ever since she passed away, we don't really do like family get togethers anymore, like big ones, like cousins and uncles, you know, it only happens like, you know, you see them at funerals or maybe a wedding or two, but... You know, we used that's... to hang out almost every weekend, right? And my grandmother was the one that did that. That's so I, I turned is, her. That, that's how it is. I, I, I'm not yeah. sure what happened, but the the older generation that that's the one that kept everything together, like kept the family together. And I mean, it's the same way with mine. Like um, mm -hmm. we used to get together on like holidays and all that stuff, and we don't even do that now. And but everybody's like oh we got our uh we got our own lives and stuff like that like yeah but so did everybody yeah. else back then you know yeah and they did we all took the time and made the effort to go see our grandparents and yeah it doesn't happen anymore and it's kind of sad and i believe Here's that that's that oh <laughs> i like that this one I actually sold to uh, NFT Lisa. When I dropped my collection in January, she was one of the first people to pick up a piece. Uh, this is another girl named Beth, Beth the Clairvoyant. She's, uh, uh, right now she's a spiritual healer that lives out in Alberta. Mm. She does Reiki or Reiki and uh, yeah, she's very spiritual like myself. Like we, we, are, we call ourselves, you know, pagans and like I read tarot cards. Like <laughs> you're gonna laugh. I, I haven't even really told anybody except maybe a couple people. But um, I've read tarot for a lot of people in Twitter, in NFT space. 
I read Tara for uh, Digital Art Chick. I read a couple of her readings. Um, I've done Woman NFTs readings. I've done Empress Trash's reading. Max Capacity, I did one for him. Now, how do you do it I did online? One. Well, it's like, it's a, it's a, you get a physical charge, right? You get like a connection to the person. So like, I'll put the person's like name or whatever on my screen and I'll just focus on it and I'll just channel the energy into my cards, into my deck. And then I'll pull out like three or four cards and I'll take a screenshot of it or a picture of it and I'll send it to them and I'll explain each individual one. And then after that, I'll tell them what the overall messages that I'm receiving for them, you know, like... It's kind of like, eh, it's, it's, uh, so being pagan, like, I'm not against like Christianity. Like, I know you said you're a Christian and I'm a lot, like, I think people are allowed to believe what they want to believe in, but I really well, I'll, connected. I'll, I'll, to... I'm, I'm going to tell you something real quick, um, before you move on. I used to be into Wicca, so. Okay. <laughs> I, I know All right. So paganism. I... Yeah, so that's that's pretty much what I'm into, and I really connected to. I already have like the deities that I identify with, which is Sarah Dwin and uh, Saranos, the you know the god of nature. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing about Sarah Dwin is that she had a cauldron named Awen, and this is like the Celtic mythology, right? Mm-hmm. She had hired a blind man to stir her pot, to stir her potions. Mm. And she's the now, goddess you, you, of it. You said Celtic. Um, I, a lot of people don't know this, but there's different types of paganism. There is different types of paganism. Like I identify with and all that stuff. Yeah, and there's Norse and like you know, like the Vikings and mm-hmm. yeah. I just always connected to Celtic stuff, right? And so, like back to that, like she hired a blind guy to stir her potion, and and she's the goddess of inspiration, and I'm an artist. You know, wow. so you put all that together. And you're putting, you're creating artwork that you're inspired by, and you got this vision problem, right? You, you, you get, it just seems so like connected. Now, like if it I really drew. Do a reading for me. How how would that happen? If I was to do a reading for you, I could totally do it for you. I mean, not at this moment, but I will. Yeah, and it's free. Like I always tell people too in the space. I'm like, hey man, first one's free. You know, like just if you connect to it. You know, I did one for Lola Menthol one time, too. Like, she was another artist that I follow. And it's just, yeah, like, it's just, you can connect to these people and you can relay these messages that you're receiving through the cards. And, they're like, it's almost like studying a piece of art, right? Like, you're you're connecting to the art piece. You're, you're feeling some sort of story from it. Like, um, like tonight, for example, you know, I'm just scrolling X and I see X Chomp or, uh, yeah, Chombo. He dropped a new piece, like, in his work in progress and, like, showing it. And I was like, man, that, like, I connected to his artwork and I explained it to him in not great detail because, like, my computer's being really slow and, you know, I'm blind. And sometimes my typing's just not the best. <laughs> so I usually save that for my phone. That way I can just have it right in front of my face. But, See, I'm uh, better on my computer. Yeah. I'm way better on my computer than I am on my phone. Really? Yeah. Wow. I can, but I, I, I can type with my eyes closed though. Yeah, I can't. I but it's crazy I, when I type. Um, I don't, I don't type like a normal person. Um, I use two fingers. Yeah, yep, I do that too, and then my thumbs, my index yeah. finger, and my thumb. Yep. Oh yeah, we grew up in the nineties. Yeah, we we adapted to the technology. <laughs> we didn't have. Proper keyboard placement. I don't even know if that was a thing back then. We, uh, we had we had M I R C. Remember that, dude? Really? Merc. I used to chat be, lines. I used to. Yeah. Uh, I used to be on that. I used to be on Yahoo. Um, that was that was my main one was Yahoo, and that's actually how I found paganism. Um, was the paganism chat rooms? Okay. Like, well, how I found it. Uh, um, I think so I, just, I got called to it. There's one day I was sitting in this apartment that I was in, and the wind was blowing outside, and uh, the trees were moving, and I just I kept seeing like a face in the tree, and I was like, wow, kind of looks like you know 
a guy with horns and it, you know i looked it all up and i was like man that's that's sarah that was like it's the god of nature blowing in this giant oak tree and it's kind of like told me like okay like you need to do something with your life <laughs> so i kind of found that kind of now now that i'm a christian when you say a guy with horns you know where my mind goes now oh yeah yeah but i, I just can't how do you Christianity know? Christianity. How do you know? Popular. That? Oh yeah, but I don't believe in that stuff, right? So I don't believe in heaven or hell. I don't believe in angels. Yeah, I don't. I yeah. believe in something else. I don't know. Oh, yeah. But I'm not to people doing it. Like I've done, I've done benefits for churches before, right? Like I've gotten my artwork into a fundraiser for this, a friend of mine. He uh, is a minister and. He asked for some like artwork, so I put some artwork into that and was raising money for the church. And like, I'm definitely all about like, you know, putting my name out there and helping the cause, and mm -hmm. you know, just being a kind person because that's what artists are, right? Most of us like we're we're not this degen culture that everybody's like, oh, you're a degen. It's like, no, I'm an artist. Yeah, I'm not. You know? <laughs> I don't like yeah. losing money. To be honest with you. <laughs> yeah no like it's uh i just wanna i was watching i was in a spaces last night with nft god it was like it, it popped up and it said tests and i'm like okay i'll jump in on board and it was just a post about how to farm engagement mm. and he was like you, know, you want you want to be an asshole to 50 percent of the people and nice to the other 50 percent and then you know those people will be drawn to you and then you can switch it up and be assholes to those people and i'm just like Whoa, whoa, whoa! Like, why, why can't you just be yourself? Yeah. Why can't you just, why can't you just talk real talk? You know, like connect to people that way. And I've been doing that a lot lately with my Twitter. Like, people are talking about the algorithm and how it's kind of screwing them over. And it's like, well, right now, all we're doing is posting art mm -hmm. inside this NFT bubble, right? We're in this NFT circle, and we're just sharing art to each other. But guess what? We're on an app that you can connect with anybody in the world mm -hmm. over anything. It could be anything art related. It could be, you know, so I'll start like, I'll do searches and I'll look at trending topics and I'll be like, I'm going to comment on this guy's stuff. And like, this is a fine artist. He doesn't even do NFTs. This is a painter. This is a person that makes maps and artwork. And Hey, this company is really cool. And I want to connect to them and, you know, follow them and see what's going on. You just, you got to branch out there. You can't just focus on, nfts and nft crypto crypto twitter and all that stuff right like you gotta you gotta just push it out there mm -hmm. and see um I, I saw your post about that too and it it kind of bothered me that like i don't feel like there's any reason to be an asshole to anybody ever right and like, if that's actually, what i gotta do to grow i don't want to grow because I'm not going to be an asshole to people just so it, I grow. It, it, that makes no I mean, sense I, to me. I want to make friends, and that's not how you make friends. But I, I've been an asshole to some people in the space for sure. Um, but well, I'm just being real. If I see something that's fake, I'm pretty blunt, and I'm going to call it on it. I'm going to be like, that's fake. Like, I've noticed what are you that. doing? I've noticed that. You know, you're, you're very outspoken. And I, think, and I think a lot of it, man, is is that, you know, I have a vision problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I could wake up tomorrow and not see anything. So I'm just being as real as I possibly can be to people because that's who I am. Yep. You know, if I'm seeing a picture of an artist posting a picture of their their artwork, but they're half naked and the picture's in the background and we're supposed to be focusing on the art, but we're too busy looking at this half topless woman. What are you trying to portray in your message? What are you trying to portray as an artist? Mm -hmm. Do you want people to look at? Do you want people to look at the art, or do you just want to sell your body? And I think that it needs to be more focused on the art, because it's just this is the space we're in, right? We're in an art space. We and want to they, get our art. If they seat. want to use their body as art, like um, what was it? Oh new, yeah! New yoga oh game? yeah! Cool. Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. Boy. And there's another artist too, man. She's an awesome artist, and and she paints in the nude. She covers herself in paint, and we're friends on here. Like, 
we were in a member of a group called the Fabric Society, and mm-hmm. like we were gonna do drops in Los Angeles and stuff. But I, I ended up leaving that group just because of you know difference of opinions. But I think they actually rugged, so I don't think they're actually doing anything. But mm. um, yeah, I mean a lot of rugs and NFTs. But yeah, um, actually this girl she paints with her body and she's telling her story and her she's moving on the canvas and it's it's beautiful, you know, like gosh. I've seen a post that she did not long ago. Uh, nude painter, I think, is the name. My computer's being really slow. Uh, it's new yoga girl. It's not the one. Uh, I can't find it right this moment, but I, I'd seen a post earlier about it. And I was just like, oh man, like I had to connect, and, and that's the other thing with connections in the Web three space, right? Like, I'll put it back on some art here. Um, the Web3 space, the collaborations that you can do, mm-hmm. you know, I've done collaborations with so many people that it's been so like amazing feeling. Oh, here's a cool piece. I'll bring this up. See, I this haven't exactly done up. any collaborations yet. No, no, not a single one, man. It's, there was one time. This is when the whole like NFT kids movement was happening because you don't see a lot of that anymore. You don't see a lot of parents promoting their kids' artwork. Mm-hmm. There used to be a lot of that. And I wish that we could go back to it because I think it's a beautiful thing that you can put your kids' artwork out there. Um, I had done a collaboration with a family. They're all into NFTs and crypto. And I don't put a lot of figures in my art. I haven't, like, in the past. Like, I couldn't really draw people right, and I couldn't connect to people. That's why I mainly do landscapes and, like, you know, different architectural buildings and stuff because I connect more to it. Mm-hmm. And so she had created this person, and I was like, oh, I really love your artwork. Like, can we do a collaboration? And I had asked the parents' permission because she was, like, you know, an underage artist, and, you know, she was, like, I think 15 at the time. Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, she was so excited. She ended up drawing a cool character and I did this collaboration with her. And I'm like, you know, you keep the profits, like go ahead, like your family could use it and, you know, go ahead. It's like, I have a full time job. And so I, you just make these connections with people. And another person that I did a collaboration with, she is, uh, she creates these, these masks, little terror arts. And, she I had seen her. yeah i know who you're talking about little terror arts yeah she she does like this these masks and these figures and i really thought like this is really cool and her story is that she was saving her money like i think she's in brazil i'm not 100 percent sure her location but i think it's like brazil you know some hot country she said she was saving her money for a saxophone because she wanted to teach herself how to play saxophone and i'm like that has always been one of my dreams is to own a saxophone and just learn how to belt out some music because I love saxophone music. And so I did a collaboration with her and, you know, she ended up selling some of it and she, you know, she ended up buying her saxophone. Like I didn't take any profits from that. I didn't take a cut. I did it just out of the goodness of my heart because to me, that's what art is about. Yeah. It's not, it's not always about the price tag. Like you see like a lot of on Twitter, like, Artists need to get paid for this. Artists need to get paid for that. No. Artists just want to create the art. They want to create something that connects to people. Mm-hmm. It's not about the price tag. If it sells, that's bonus. Like that piece that was sold today, that $700 piece that sold for that benefit, mm-hmm. 50% of that's going to kids. And then the other 50%, it gets used for something that, you know, like things that could be needed, like bills paid, groceries, and, yeah. you know, just it's used for good and see and like, I, I, I see that too like people talking about the artists need to get paid and i i, I agree to an extent <laughs> um but the first 10 years of my career i did everything for free like mm. i never got paid in the first 10 years that i was creating art and it just it it, it made me happy and well no i can't say yeah. i didn't get paid because I got to go to all these different concerts and I got like an open bar and all of my friends would be able to get in free with me and they got an open bar. So, I mean, it was a 
party, man. And so, I mean, it just, it, it was so much fun just being a part of my local music community, you know? And yeah, I was helping out, um, like different bands and stuff locally. And it, it, it wasn't even about getting paid. It was about yeah. being able to go out and have fun. And um, like, like I said, I, I, I say that I didn't get paid, but they paid me in other ways. Like um, there was a bunch of bands where I designed their merch and I would go to shows and they would be waiting on me with, with shirts, like printed. And most of the shirts that I own are, are from that time. Like... <laughs> I should probably go shopping, but um, I, I own so many different metal shirts, like metal band shirts, and majority of them I created, and that is beautiful. This is a, a collaboration that I did with Sabbath. Wow. He had a he had an open open collab thing. He had created this like character, and he said like incorporate it into your artwork. So I incorporated it into my back garden and flowers and plants and just kind of turned it into a digital piece of art changed the coloring on their hair and yeah just played with it and really had fun with it see i love sabbath that piece is the line work like it 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 matches the the, like if you wouldn't have told me that i would thought i would have thought that that figure belonged there like it was created for that yeah, just put it into this piece that I had created and Sabbath had created. And I had listed it, I think, at one time. I didn't sell any, but it's, uh, yeah, I created it one year ago. Mm. Yeah. And there's, uh, um, there, there's one thing that I noticed, um, not with the art side of NFTs, but like the, the PFP side back when like the bull market was going on. Um, uh, and it bothered me. <laughs> uh, they would and you might have noticed this um, there was a lot of collections and you could tell that they was using like clip art because mm. the line weight wasn't consistent and yeah. that bothered me so much and I would see people like oh this art is good and I'm like you have no idea what they did like they speak it Speaking of speaking of profile picture projects, I did one too. It was my wife's idea. We were thinking of like Cabbage Patch Kids, but we called them COVID Kids. Oh wow! I created I created it in November 2021, and I create like you know I'll click on um, I'll click on Fair Fair Tagliano. She's a pretty popular artist in the space. Mm. And uh, I had done these little characters, you know, little little kids going to school. And what really brought it on was. You know, my son at that time had started kindergarten and his first experience in school was like, you know, hand sanitizer and face masks and oh, we're going through a pandemic and, you know, like that's his first way to start school. And so I just wanted to create this little, oh, well, here's Max Capacity. I did him too. Wow. You know, yeah, I just created these little cool little cards, little NFT pieces, right? And, and this is actually, this was dropped on... Um, Oh, what's that? What's that chain? Can't remember at the moment. Uh, Polygon. Yeah, Polygon. Yeah, it was, on, it was on Polygon, right? And I thought I'd try that, give that a go. I don't think I sold any. I, I gave some away. But I got I like, look, I got Club NFT Polygon. here too, right? There's Jason from Club NFT. Like, he's got his own little. You know, COVID kid that I created. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, art gnome. You know? Yeah. yeah. His hair so is it was a just lot a, different it's now. Fun. Yeah, his hair is definitely a lot different now. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, when yeah, I first no, seen him, I was like, who, who is that? Yeah, no, it's, it's all kinds of stuff that I've been doing and creating and experimenting with. And I'm just having a blast. It's the best way to be with your art. Yeah. And that one, man, I love that one. The the space one. The Yeah. Oh yeah. Now Do you remember this? 
What are those? Do you remember small pixelated things? Do you remember back in 2021, the small movement, S M O L? It was, uh, look, that's how big it is. That's how big this piece of art is. Holy cow. It's just a tiny little pixel. No way. But it's, it's a, a 10 pixel by 10 pixel, I think, was the standard. Empress Trash was a part of the movement. Uh, Avery, I think he was in it too. You know, a very famous artist, that, that guy. And we just created all these little, like this is a small lily pond. I did a small little Monet lily pond. <laughs> yeah, it was a huge movement back in the day, you know, back in about 20 years ago. <laughs> See, I actually, <laughs> it feels... um, I actually bought a piece um, from Max Osiris uh, not long ago um, on Super Rare. And it was a small banana. And... Um, but the reason why I bought it was because I, I thought it was just a blank canvas. I didn't see the banana. And didn't see the banana. Yeah. So <laughs> then I, I, when I seen it, I was like, oh, oh. And then it like made me smile so big. I was like, I got I, I to gotta have it. So I bid That's on it cool. and I didn't say anything. Um, I got that piece for like 220 bucks. Oh, wow. Yeah, he didn't say Jesus. anything either, so I was like, good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then when this it sold, cool... and then when it sold, people was commenting like, how did I not see that? I'm like, well, a, a blind dude did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was, uh, this is my Genesis drop on, uh, what was it, Hickanook at the first when it came out. What is that? And... Pick a nuke. I think that's how you pronounce it. But now it's like a Tezos piece, right? Like it's it's on object. And I transferred it over from the other one. And oh. Yeah, this was my uh, this was my Genesis piece on Tezos blockchain. Mm. This is the first one that I put on, and this is from a photo that I took. This is one of my favorite places here in New Brunswick. It's called uh, Seal Cove, and it's an old like bunch of fishing shacks, and I just really love this piece. And I'd, I'd put it out there for uh, 500 Tezos. Mm. And I got, I got an offer on it, but I'm not accepting it. How do you NFT? How do you NFT offered 8.88 X O O T X or O X T Z? And I just was like, no, nah, man, like it's listed at 500. Why would I sell yeah. it for? That's hey, and that guy that guy sent me a lot of low ball offers and I actually blocked that collector. I don't I don't associate with him. There's I don't a lot even of people he, that do that. I get a lot of low ball offers and I'm like, just stop. Like and like he's collected some of my work before, but it's just like why? Why would you offer me such a low ball? And like I got excited, really excited at work one time because he's like, Okay, I'll I'll give you a, a decent offer on a piece of art and I was all excited right and I don't keep the, the crypto stuff on my phone I keep it separate from like I use it on my computer right because I want to if someone's sending me a link I want to check it and see if it's a scam so I use my phone yeah. I don't have a wallet connected to my phone so I was just like all excited and then I got home and I'm like that's not an offer man that's a slap in the face mm -hmm. so I just said no I'm done with you. I'm not, I don't really care anymore about your shit. So I, uh, I don't associate. And it happens in space, you know, but you know, artists have to learn how to say no. Yeah. And especially in this space. Like you're so fighting the algorithm and you're trying to get seen, you're trying to get reach, you're trying to get your art out there. And someone sends you an offer and you're like, Oh man, like, I don't know when I'm going to get another offer, but you got to learn to say no. What don't, really don't jump on it. Me is all right i got a piece on super rare and it's listed for um uh 0.25 well this dude went i don't even know who it is but um he went to open sea and made an offer for um it was a uh, 0.025 oh wow. I, I was like if i didn't see that like yeah <laughs> Exactly, like you would have been ripped off, and you know it happens all the time here. Yeah, and people have to definitely do the research. 
people have to do their research and uh, really pay attention because you don't want to screw yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's happened a lot. Like I, um, yeah. during the bull market, I used to see people like, "Oh no, I accepted such and such offer. I thought it was this much." Yeah, you know, it happened to my good friend Angie Taylor. You know, like she had an ape. You know, she had an ape in her wallet, and that was her retirement fund, right? Like she was counting on that for her retirement. And she, some guy was hacked, sent a link. She clicked on it. Bam, she got drained. Mm. You know, and it's so sad when that happens. Now we can bring this one up. Vision loss collection. That's uh, I haven't really put a lot in here, but I did sell a piece from it. Just the, the last sale was 0 0.1. I was just experimenting with eyeballs and art. That. You know, because, like, I'm a visually impaired artist. You know, we both are. So, you, like, eyes really see a lot of stuff. So, okay. some pieces, some collections, you know, and I got a collector in there. Like, he bought that piece from me. And I don't know. I've, I've made probably close to 50K in art sales and NFTs. Over the course of two two and a half years, and I mean it's all trackable. So I, I have a lot of well, like I'm sitting on four terabytes of artwork. So a lot of my artwork's not even minted or listed. A lot of it's on my computer, and I usually do one or two to three pieces a day, typically, of art. See, Either I'm, it be I'm like the, I'm the complete opposite. I'll spend months on a piece and. Uh, there's some that I've spent month, months on and I'm like, I still don't like it. It's not done. Yeah. It's, I don't, my, I don't think my ADHD would ever allow me to, oh, here we go. This will right up our alley. Glaucoma auras. This is a glitch piece that I did. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, gosh, you know, yeah. Because glaucoma aura suck. You're looking at something and you got all this this shape and this movement and this color flashing in your eyeballs. Like, yeah. You know, so I, a lot of my art is you know experiments and I try to want like this collection borrowed uncertainty that I created. It's and there's only two pieces in it. I didn't really list any more. It's just uh, a collection that I don't know when I how much time I have left. Mm -hmm. This piece here, maybe tomorrow, is uh, an interesting one too. It's just a, a picture of my ashtray because I'm like a heavy smoker. I smoke a lot of cigarettes. I could probably smoke 10 cigarettes just in this sitting here, right? So, yeah, I smoke um, too. I, I don't even know how many I've smoked. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nasty habit. Like, I need to stop. But I've been smoking for 25 years. So, how long do I have? So, this is called. You know, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll butt out my last cigarette. Maybe tomorrow I'll quit. Maybe it'll kill me. I, I don't know. So I just, a lot of my art has feeling and emotion. And I'm, I don't think a lot of people really see it, you know? And that's, the that, that brings the, me. That, the people that take the time to actually look up the, what the art means, those are the ones that you won't. To collect your art anyways you don't want somebody that's just well me me person i don't want somebody that's just collecting it to flip it yeah like i don't i don't really want flippers either right i want people to connect to it i want people to look at it and appreciate it and, and be inspired by it and yeah i got this piece actually we talked about this one earlier yeah. this is in uh that's the that's mark the, kelly's isn't that's the one that, um, yeah, that, that's the one that's on sale now, ain't it? Yeah, and I sold uh, a copy of it today, too. So, Mark Kelly Sauce Book, I actually picked one up. This is in his uh, Foundation Worlds. So, each piece of art is listed at 0 0.01, and I'm lucky to be able to get into this little world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Mark has just bought three NFTs off of me in a couple days, and... You know, people say NFTs are dead, but well, I'm still selling them. You know, this piece is just one that I took yesterday. I thought of an old house. You know, this house was part of my, the start of my journey, really, too, right? Like, there's so many starts and things that inspire you when you're, like, a mixed media artist and you want to dabble in this, dabble in that, and you want to create this and create that. My brain never shuts off. Mm -hmm. Like, 
you know, like after I'm done this, I don't know, I might do a piece of art. I might go hang out with my wife if she's still awake and I might uh, put on a movie or put on an art documentary and discover something else about other artists and be inspired by something else and be like, oh, I'm going to try that. Like I've done Chinese landscape arts. I've done marbling with textures and I've just, there's so many things I've done. <laughs> I wanted to do stained glass at one point too, but I'm like, you know what, Ryan, you got one eye, bud. Do you really want to work with glass? Probably, <laughs> no. probably not, right? Like, Get no. Get this. Get no. this. <laughs> um, about two, maybe three years ago, I wanted to get into woodworking. Um, mm -hmm. Then I, I went and bought a chop saw. And my mom bought me a table saw. And Ooh. then I was like, you know what? I, I kind of need my fingers. <laughs> yeah. And I thought about it because I, and I was good until I got my saws. And then I was like, I don't know about this. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> and because I would be here by myself with a saw. Yeah, like, and splinters, right? Like you were talking earlier about how your eyes really thin and your eye could pop. And well, I can wear like safety splinters. glasses. Yeah, but they get in there, man. I used to do construction. I used to build houses and stuff too. Like you'd I be did. amazed what could go in your eye with wearing safety glasses. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I used to do like a lot of construction. But what well, you don't know? I got, the saw that I bought was a miter saw, so that way I could get different angles and stuff. But um, right. I. I I, I thought about it, and I was like, because cause I used to do construction, too. And um, I used to do, uh, like, uh, home remodeling with my uncle and my other uncle. I used to do roofing. Well, no, I didn't do roofing. I was carrying shingles up a freaking ladder. Um, mm. Hated that. I, dude, <laughs> I was I've been there, done that, don't want to go back. I was like 100 pounds, and he's like, come on. I'm like, these things weigh as much as I do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, can you imagine a six foot four guy on a roof? No, like, it, it sucked. But I ended up doing flat roofing instead, working with hot asphalt and tar and, oh, you know, no. modded roof. Yeah, like I got some scars on my arm from the, the hot tar asphalt. See, Stop, it's just... it's crazy that you uh, that you worked with asphalt. I used to um, <laughs> I'm about to mess your my whole mind up right now. I used to operate a front loader at an asphalt plant, and oh, yeah. and it was it was the best job of my life, dude. Like, I, it was so much fun, and I could see good then. Um, I I was driving and everything. But now I look back and I'm like, they probably shouldn't have let me do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, some of the shit I, you see in these jobs, right? And when I found out that I was um, legally blind, um, I didn't believe them because <laughs> I drove to the eye doctor. And uh, so he was like, uh, you're, you're legally blind, you this is what's going on and I told him I was like no -uh. <laughs> you know I've never uh, I've never had my driver's license not really? once yeah I just never ended up getting it I had my beginners and then I just lost interest and then, and then when the eye thing happened I'm like well what's the point now like I can't see anything at night time like so I just I haven't and maybe I will maybe I'll try it but I don't know Hey, Tesla. You never know. I could. My sister has one of those. <laughs> I, I don't know if you Pretty noticed this or not, like if you've seen it, but every once in a while, I call Elon out about it, and I'm like, dude, let me be the first blind dude to drive a Tesla with full self-driving um, <laughs> with you in the passenger seat. You believe in your cars that much. Elon, if you're listening to this, quit being a little punk. Get in the passenger seat with a blind man and let me drive your car. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, but, but that that was that was so like when they told me that 
I, um, I, I told them they were lying. Like, I was like, no. -uh. And, um, my, my boss ended up firing me. Um, because I, I was stupid and I told them. Um, I get it. I shouldn't have been working there at that time. But, I was like, you know what? I'm, I don't believe them. So I applied for another job. And I got it. Uh oh, wow. And I won't think in, um, what the job that I applied for was, um, they were, they were building shore walls. And so they was like drilling H beams into the ground. These holes were like hundreds of feet deep and wow. big enough for a person. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm sitting there walking around and then I, I, I I almost fell, and that would have killed me, and yeah, <laughs> I don't know how they would have got me out if I would have fell, but um, it, it was like, I worked there for like a week, and my brother worked there too, he's such a good brother that he didn't even say anything, and um, the boss man, he was like, he went up to my brother and he was like, hey, there's something with your brother, what's going on? And then that's when my brother snitched on me um, and told. And the dude, he was like, what? He, he's, what? <laughs> and he came up to, well, he, he called me over to his little office and stuff. And um, then next thing you know, he's like, I, I, your brother told me what happened. I got to let you go. He was like, but you worked so hard. I wish that I had another person that worked as hard as you. So what I'm going to do is double your pay for the time that you were here. And oh, wow. I started crying. Like I, My eyes have caused me to cry so much. <laughs> and Because I, I love working, you know. And, I mean, you did construction. You, when you get done, you feel like you've had a good day. You feel like you've done something. And oh yeah. Okay. So, oh, that's the way I felt. And then I was like, "What do I do now?" And yeah, so, but I, I lied and I told him like, "No, everything's good and I can do this." And but it, it I'm so glad that they fired me because somebody would have got hurt. I probably would have been the one that got hurt. And yeah, but um. Well, Ryan, I said I wasn't going to keep you for two and a half hours. I lied. Here, we'll put one more piece on. Yeah. This is uh, two pieces. That These works. go together. This was created a while ago. This is my foundation drop. And I did this with a friend of mine. And it's split. Uh, he goes by Alpha Omega. Mm -hmm. He is a phenomenal artist and musician and just does the craziest, coolest things with like my artwork this one's called war and I'll, I'll turn it on here if it loads the sound i don't know if you can hear the sound i probably can't hear the sound no i hear because it's on mic oh you do okay oh wow this is the, the piece is me laying on my couch thinking about war thinking about what was happening with Ukraine and and just how we're always fighting, we're always you know, there's always war and greed and money and so we incorporated this piece together and we called it war and split with Alpha. You know, it was there that one Ethereum. I created this in twenty twenty one. So I guess maybe it wasn't really Ukraine yet, but there was something war on T V I think and it just kinda got me in the field. But then we created and then we created peace. And so this is a, from a watercolor painting that I had done. A watercolor painting I had done just of a temple. If me incorporated all this stuff into it. And the sound and the, you know, the Yeah, right? It was just, It's just, I think this is a part of, this is a part of 
crypto history, really. You know, people have been really sleeping on foundation, but yeah, I haven't really sold any foundation except and, like the, my own contract. But. And there, there's a um, the the drop that you have going on the edition. Um, I know I asked you. <laughs> I, I, there, I, I, I had, I got a little secret. Um, the yeah, that one. The reason that I asked you how long that's gonna be going on, I plan mm-hmm. on getting one. Well, that'd be awesome, man. I got another guy interested too. Um, Mark is another guy that was saying he wants to pick one up. Uh, I mean, Mark yeah. Kelly already got one. There's 14 available right now. Yeah. Yeah. They, oh, I gotta get it. <laughs> and it's 0. 0.01. Yeah, I mean, there's no pressure, right? Like, you know, all my art is differently priced. And you know how, like, there's a, the number five in my name? Like, mm-hmm. Ryan Andrew Five is my handle. There, there's a reason behind all that stuff. Number five is an important number in my life. You know, I've been creating art for five years now. I've mm. got a family of five, I've got five kids. My birthday is November the 5th, you know, it's, so I kind of put my prices out there around that number, you know, 0.05. I mean, the 0.01 is obviously like, you know, it's what Mark was the, had said the prices should be for this little world. So I was like, okay. And you know, it's fine. But yeah, my high, my highest sale, my all time highest sale was 0.35. You know, at that time it was like 1300 Canadian. Mm. And uh, yeah, so like five has really played a big part in my my branding, I guess. And not a lot of people know that. They're like, why is it got a five? Like, why is it got the number five in his name? And well, plays into now my they life. Do. All they have to do is watch this. Exactly. As long as mute's not on. <laughs> no, no, I just no, no, we're good. We're good. I, I, I got just, it on another monitor. That way, I can check. Yeah, I'm good. just teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah, when you when you told me the story behind that, um, man, just man, I hate that house, that. yeah, right? Like, can you imagine being a kid? Like the whole story around this house is that I've been taking pictures of it for the past five years, and I found out the history. I found out the name who originally owned it. It's called the Patterson House. And it used to, it was built in the 1800s and it used to be a steamboat captain's house. And he used to paddle up the big St. John river here in my city. And this is on the outskirts. So he used to like steamboat home to his family, to his kids. Mm. And it's like, you know, like I got pictures of like the windows and up above each window, there's like little detail in like the, uh, in the framework and, you know, like I just this house had so much history. I've done so many art pieces with this house mm-hmm. that that's why I called it "Goodbye, Old Friend" because nature is finally taking over and it's reclaiming it. You know, like the back, the back side, the barn side, it's already down. You know, like it's it's down. Mm. This used to be nice. Used to be a nice porch on here. Like this was a two story house. You know, it used to be a nice porch, and then the top just caved down in on it, and all the vines are growing over it. And, I did like a infrared setting in the filters on Lightroom, and I, just, I really connected. I really liked because at the time the sun was setting too, so that light on the left hand side shining onto that house just kind of like illuminated it for me. It's like goodbye, old friend. You know, like it's gone. It's gone. Really connected to this piece. And, and where I got off into Mark's world, I was like, I really want to, I really want to implement implement this into this piece and his world because I think it has a lot of meaning. I it's a really that. lovely piece. And just the um, the the history of it, like that's you know, there's so many memories that are built on that in in that house. And I mean, there's that house that I took last year. Last year, there was it was like this. You know, the gutter started to fall off, and nature, you'd see all the vines all over it. And It doesn't even know, look like the same place now. Yeah. This is a, a high-dynamic 
high dynamic range, I think is the term, HDR picture that I took, and I kind of just played around, because it kind of looked like pencil drawing, and just the way I edited it, you know, I really like it. I love it. I've, Beautiful. I've done some paintings at this house, too. Uh, Raw Gallery, he's actually picked up a couple of this house before, too. A couple NFTs from it. Different different ways that I've done it. Wow. Yeah, so it's definitely like saying goodbye to an old friend because, you know, I'm not going to be able to capture this image again. I'm not going to be able to see this house in its entirety. It's it's preserving this the history of this place, and it's preserving it on the blockchain. Wow. You know? I love it. I love it so much. And um, there's, you said 14 editions left. Um, if anybody's listening to this, uh, save one. Um, there's, a, there's only 13 available at this point. <laughs> one of them is <laughs> well, Thank you. I got, I got other pieces in Mark's little world too. It was fun. It was funny. It was, I kind of screwed up first. Like he had, we were talking in DMs and he's like, you know, I really want you, I'm really interested in getting your artwork in here and I want to see some more of your artwork. And I'm like, oh, cool, man. Like, yeah, totally. And so I was like, oh, I went to go. He, he whitelisted me and he allowed me to get in, like to create on his world at nighttime. So I did it the next morning and I was like, ah, oh, look, Mark, like I don't have the Ethereum. And at that point, I only had like, three dollars and stuff right i didn't have enough for gas i'm like you know I'm, i don't have the money for gas Just, you know give it to another artist that, that wants to you know get in on this you know like, mm -hmm. go for it and he's like no I, I really want your work in there so he sent me the ethereum he got me started to get on here and then i thought i was minting it in his world but there's a drop down box and i didn't click that box so i ended up minting it another piece on not his world but on foundation and uh he ended up picking it up too like he, oh, he bought wow. a edition of this right he bought one of these ones oh, and then funny. so i was like well where i screwed up can i go and put one in your world he's like yeah you could do like 20 a day and i'll you know pick one up and i'll you know wow so I ended up selling three to Mark Kelly, you know, sauce book. And that, that's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Because that, guy, that guy's a really big time collector and, you know, member of the community. And I really enjoy Mark. I think he's a, he's a nice person. That's One incredible. of the good ones. Well, Ryan, I don't want to take up any more of your time. You need to get to work. I'm going to say get to work. Or watch a movie, or you know, go spend time with your wife, like you said, or you know, whatever. Um, I I do want to thank you so much for doing this again, um, oh, twice yeah. in one day. I, I'm I'm glad it was it was still authentic, you know, because I mean, you showed me a bunch of stuff that I hadn't even seen. So, but that one, uh, yeah, let's end on that one. Goodbye, best friend. <laughs> Like, wow. Or old friend, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Goodbye, old, old friend. I love that so much. But, um... And, you know, and I look at this one, too. Remember that one I showed you earlier, Country Roads? Yeah. I want to just, just want to pop that one up. Okay. Because I think... I think this picture would look really cool in that style of art. You know, like that, that Country Road one. I'll go to my Blind Chronicles collection. Look, three Ethereum volume. Probably mm. crazy. Here it is, Country Roads. This one was... Wouldn't, wouldn't that house look cool in that style of work? Oh, my gosh. So I'm kind of like, you know, I'll kind of take, like, old pieces. And, and even though that they're minted as NFTs, in my mind, it's like, well, I'm still changing it to something else. Yeah. I can still... I still put that and connect to it and build something else onto it. I can draw it and I can turn it into something else. It's not the same piece, right? So, you know, I, don't know. I was thinking, um, you've, you've taken pictures of that house for five years. Um, why mm -hmm. not do like an animated loop of the destruction of the house? Uh, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't know a lot of that kind of how to do that stuff really. 
I still don't even really know how to put music in the background with my art. <laughs> Unless I'm using like an app on my phone that I have like a subscription to or something, right? Oh. But hey, this one's this one's available for maybe zero we point. Do a collaboration then, because I know how. Yeah, yeah you know, I I totally do a collaboration with you, man. I'd like to learn how to do that stuff. Oh, this is a you're you're in farm country, aren't you? Virginia, it's like farms and stuff. Oh yeah, bunch of yeah, look at that and stuff. There's one old farmhouse. Oh wow. And see, yeah. I love stuff like that too, like um, old farmhouses and stuff. But the only problem is around here, a lot of them are haunted, and because <laughs> the um, the Civil War came through here and. Yeah, it's it's. Mm, I stay away. Like, from you believe in stuff, do you? You do believe I? in ghosts? Do oh fuck! Look, uh, yeah, my here's house that. is haunted. <laughs> here's that house again. Look at that one. That's the same house. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool. That is so cool. I feel like there's oh, a yeah. ghost in there somewhere. Got to be. Oh, there totally. There's got to be. Yeah, no, I believe in that stuff too, man. And actually, my family's, uh, we, we come from a long line of um, seeing stuff like that. See, my mom, man, my um, grandma. My house is haunted. Um, I'll, I'll tell you about the, the history in private. I, it's, I'll, oh, I'll, yeah, for sure. I'll tell you. But, um, yeah, that, that would look so good on that country road type uh type of style wow <laughs> well i know this little guy Hello. little shit yeah this is my aunt's dog it's no longer alive now but i ended up taking a nice little picture of it sitting out on the step you know now, is that the one that you so, painted that, that's in her house uh, no this is a different relative this is my aunt terry this is her dog that she had and uh, my aunt judy was a dog oh. my aunt judy's a dog had my aunt Judy had a dog. Judy was a dog. She was a dog. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, this this is Chanel. Yeah, she just passed away like I think this year. So oh. my aunt was a little devastated, but I got you know a little piece of art out there of her. It's not listed right now, and that's the one thing I don't like about Open Sea is that you know, <coughs> excuse me, you can only list for six months at a time, like. Mm -hmm. Like I'm an artist that has a visual impairment. Can't can't we list it like yeah, twenty five years? Yeah, ten years. You know, give that option, right? Oh, here we go. I know you're trying be. to cut me out. There. It shouldn't just... even be like um, uh, you shouldn't even have that, have to have that option. Once you start a auction, it's listed. Why not just leave it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. I mean, I still like Open Sea, and I'm still going to use them. I know they're they're stopping like lazy minting, and mm -hmm. you know they don't the royalty thing, but you know, I'm still going to use them because that's where most of my sales have been. Yeah, I've made most of my sales from Open Sea. That's where yeah. most of my stuff is. You know, like um, just yeah. I love it. It's all here. I love your work. It's so good. And do you, do you think maybe it's just a little bit everywhere, you know? That's Some people are like, why don't you put it in, they're like, why don't you put it in categories and why don't you organize it? And I'm like, but you know, it just that takes time and I just wanna make art. There's that booty again. There's that which one again? Oh yeah, the booty right there, yeah. And... There, we'll we'll click on it. Why not? Let's end with the booty. Oh goodness. There we go. <laughs> Dream Girl. This was my experiment through animation. And uh, it's actually a reference from a photo that I took in that boudoir shoot. And oh. I turned it into an anime piece. Yeah. So, yeah. That, that just stood out. Well, you know, first time I seen it, I was like, oh, booty. And booty. Yeah. Right, what did I listed that? I had it listed at 0 0.25 seven months ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's just a one-on-one. -on -one. You yeah, said how much? 0 point what? Uh, 0 0.250. So, 
I try to keep it like you know, you'll see like look there's the five popping up, right? Like zero point three five was my all time high. You know, so I I try to list it so that it's affordable. Yeah. And everybody's got different price points and people are like, Oh, you're screwing up your floor or it's like, No, I'm an artist and I'm just putting my out art there for like the uh you know, just to have the listing. I feel like and I got some more like toward collection side. Like, well, a I got some high pressed ones, but you know, like this one, I got this listed at twenty five Ethereum mm-hmm. for one and one. That's that low tide rocks one, right? With my kids on the beach and the elephant in the sand, and it's the memory. You know, that's the memory piece right there. That's beautiful yeah. too. Well, let's end with that one, man. Um, yeah, I do sure. want to thank you again for doing this. Um, it's so much fun. I could talk to you all night, but I I, I can't. <laughs> but um, I, like I said, I, I want to thank you for doing this, and I love your work. And anybody that's listening, um, please go check it out. There's so much more, so much but, more. And oh, there's pages and pages. And also follow him on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it. Um, he's he's a great person, and I'll I'll have his links um, in the description of the video. Uh, yeah, just check him out. He's a good dude, as you hear. Um, great, great fun talking to in private. So get to know him and send him a DM. Get to know him even better, and yeah. Ryan, I want to thank you so much for coming. That is crazy good. <laughs> thank you very much. We well, thanks for having me on. Little fox. How about that? Just a little baby fox. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think uh, I think this one is collected. No, this one's not. But there's another version of it out there in the universe that uh, Crypto Palm has, and Another version that one of my collectors printed off on their house because, like, for inside their house. Oh, wow. So, all my collectors can do that. Oh, this one is cool. I'm oh, sorry. I could just show my arrow. Oh, no, no. Right. You're good. You're good. I love looking. Oh, my gosh. This one's owned by Fair Cagiano. She scooped it up from me. And this is in my city. And this is just where I'm, like, some of my favorite artists are, like, Monet and Impressionist artists. And. I created this like impressionist piece of uh, a guard yeah, in my city here in Fredericton. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm addicted to art, dude. I have a lot of it, and there's gonna be a lot more of it because <laughs> well, I'm not I stopping. To, I look forward to keeping up with it, and now that we've done this, I can actually not avoid your profile. So <laughs> that was so hard. <laughs> I was like, I do not want to see nothing. And, <laughs> yeah. Because, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've looked at your work, obviously, but I, I wanted it yeah. to be what you wanted to show me. And I feel like we achieved that. So I thank you again for coming. And I hope you had just as much fun as I did. Oh, I do, man. I, I had a lot of fun. I love talking about art and talking about stories and hearing other stories. And, you know, definitely... It's a cool thing to do. You know, it's a cool thing to be able to sit in your studio and just connect to art. And I'm sure we'll do it again. I'm 100% oh, yeah. sure that we'll do this again at some point. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. And, I mean, if people want to, like, I've got, you know, YouTube interviews. I had an interview with Irish NFT girl mm-hmm. uh, two years ago. You know, there's that. There's podcasts. There's, you know, just check my link tree and, you know, check my stuff out and, you know, reach out to me if my DMs are always open. I'm always willing to like connect with artists and talk about art and you know, that's that's why I'm here. I want people to be inspired by me and by what I'm doing. Yeah. And I'll include Don't your let... links to I'll, I'll include your um, link tree. That way they can get to everything. So all right. Well awesome. I, like I said I do thank you so much, Ryan, and um I I hope you have a good night, dude and uh, oh man, look at that! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm like, what the hell? Stealth, no. That's Bitboy.
<laughs> yeah, it's her. She's a, she's an awesome artist too, Stella Bell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's so many good people in this community. <laughs> it just makes me so bullish to be here, right? Like It does. All right, well, I'm going right. to jump here. Um, you have a great night, and again, thank you so much for this, and I had so much fun. Thank it was a lot, lot of fun. Thanks for having me, man. Not a problem. Have a and have, I, I think we have really built a good friendship today. We, we've spent oh, yeah. a lot of time together. So. Yeah, it's almost like a marriage. <laughs> I mean, you gotta, you gotta take me on a date before we go before that have, far. Well, we're gonna go for some chicken. <laughs> oh, no, you work in an Italian restaurant. Like, oh, yeah, pizza. Yeah, that's true. And I don't have to pay for it, so there we go. There we go. <laughs> First date. There we go. <laughs> Don't tell your wife. <laughs> yeah. Me and Awful are going to go eat some pizza. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, man. I hope you have a great night. Oh, thank you. Cheers, dude. All right. Thank you.